It's Thursday night, and you know what that means. We've gathered around the internet to ask the question we ask each and every week, and that is, hey, did you see this one? Oh, hello, everybody. It's the podcast that you watch on Thursday night, or you watch it later. Or no, you... it's the podcast that comes in a little glass vial. It's a, a little, little glass, glass vial? vial? A little glass vial. <laughs> that was well played and well done. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, why is this looks like it's... Is it is it playing the correct thing? It is. It's just a little delayed on the other thing. Sorry. Um, hello, everyone. It is. He, we're here. Uh, for another episode of Hey, Did You See This One? Of course, you can see that uh, Cassandra has joined us once again, but you may notice that besides her special guest, there's only two of us. I just want to get this out of the way at the beginning. Um, Kaylin has decided to step away from the podcast. Um, we wish him all the best. Um, it's not like a whole thing. It's just he decided that it was time for him to move on. Um, we do wish him all the best, like I said, and anytime, Kaylin, you want to come back and be a guest on the show, you're perfectly welcome. Um, he, yeah. we are, we almost made it to a hundred episodes, uh, with him. It was the breaking point. It, he was like, hundred <laughs> is too many. I'm out of here. No, I'm kidding. No, yeah, we, yeah, hopefully he decides to come back, uh, and do guest spots, but, uh, you know, we've been ramping up guests as a thing for the last couple of months, so, um. Yeah, anytime he wants to get, come back and, and do a guest spot, the door is always open, brother. The door is always open, brother. Uh, let me just do a little Juster Ruski there. There we go. Um, but uh, that aside, um, Kaylin, we love you. Um, that aside, as you've probably noticed, Cass is with us once again. She was on for Ghost in the Shell a few weeks ago. Um and it went so well that she decided to tell us that we should watch the movie Repo. I think I think what had happened is, like, I mentioned to Steve that I wanted to watch that movie. And Steve mentioned that to you just in passing. And then you were like, do you want to do that for the show? So what we ended up doing, and I'll introduce, introduce this now, we're actually doing a whole month of musicals musical madness musical madness month yeah. i think is what we landed on for the name or manic musical month because Man we're doing all musicals that are starring unhinged whack jobs <laughs> the only way to do it that's a true yeah. musical it's yeah. true and and me and Cass were talking last night too and, and she mentioned cabaret and i was like that's a little too hinged for this month so yeah, this true. may be a recurring um month that comes up like how we do drunk carpenter month and the grimoire etc uh, the next time we do it, maybe we do some more classics. But this month we're doing probably the four most ridiculous musicals in existence. And we're starting off strong with probably the the weirdest, most unhinged thing. Not just musical, but like thing I've ever watched. <laughs> and it's it is utter chaos. Repo, the genetic opera. Um, Steve, I'm realizing now we didn't really decide who hosts this week, but you know what I'm realizing? It's like we don't. Maybe that format is maybe that's dead and gone. Maybe we're listen both, hosting. We're both hosts. We're, we're going to host together. Hosts. We're the yeah. ho we're the hosts with the most, and we have. And our I guests, am here. And, and <laughs> Cass is here. And you're to, here to to you know like uh, to be, essentially like be the, the 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 sponge that's already soaked up all of the repo knowledge over your entire life, and you're just going to squeeze it all into you know a couple of hours of discussion i was thinking um, about this earlier i the the best way i can describe watching repo in any way either you get a bunch of friends and none of you know what's happening and you just have a good time or you treat it like an acid trip and a shaman and you just have the person <laughs> who knows what's happening and they just guide you through yeah the I think our experience. our watch through was very enjoyable because we had four people. All three of us were together, plus uh, Brian, who is a friend of the show and p a potential future guest. Um, but it was great because we basically were just talking at, over, to, and uh, you know, like 
sort of playing like ring around the rosy with the the movie itself and each other being like who can make the funniest comment for this weird thing that's <laughs> happening on screen right now yeah, yeah. you very you very much sherpa us through it i am um, i we talked about this last night when we were watching it, but if me and steve watched it individually i don't think we would have gotten the same kind of satisfaction out of it and i think that i would have been confused um i think that i wanted to sort of bring up was the fact that musicals are already a situation where you're translating song to figure out what's happening and this movie has a couple of weird tangents it's got cut songs you know which we which i would go on to learn after and i really felt like it was necessary to have a super fan in the room to do this I think if, if for whatever reason me and Steve just like decided to we're gonna do repo this month, we would come on this show tonight and be like, I don't know yeah, exactly. I don't know yeah. what I just watched. Everything went way over my head. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. Just before we get to Lost in the Sauce here, I do wanna do a um I do wanna do a sort of the thing we do what the fuck am i talking about this we do it every goddamn week it's the you're doing so good 10 out of 10 already <laughs> our history with the show you yeah mean? our history with the show here i go i little... call it a, a brief history a brief history Hi. sorry well, that's delightful i uh i looked down at my phone and somebody just called me um so I hope everything's okay. It's the police. It's the police. We're calling. at your door. We're getting in. coming We're to take your take organs. Your organs <laughs> and give you a little. And you just blue hear from vial. the other side. I remember. <laughs> yep. But since uh, I'm your father, <laughs> a little glass vial. Yeah. Since Cass, you have the most um, experience and the biggest, the longest history. I would say, why don't you go ahead and go first? I think that would be give everybody and and not only okay. your history, but give everybody just a just an information dump. Just all right. Tell, say well, I am very stuff. good at an information dump, so let's go. <laughs> um, I what I first heard of this film, I guess maybe a couple months before it was released. Um, I was in a theater group in London, Ontario. And I was actually, we were talking about this last night, I remembered, I was in Tommy when I found this musical. And the director of it was like very much like, just like a cool dude who was like very much in kind of like a goth, emo, punky scene. And he came up to all of us and just said, hey, I need to show you something. And he pulled out his phone and showed us Zydrate Anatomy with no context. And I You're looked at him. Me a goth showed you this movie. I know. I Who find that knew? hard to believe. Yeah. Who knew? Never. I thought like a person that wears like sunflowers on their hat and polka dots. <laughs> on their hey, shirt. Paris Hilton is in this movie, so yeah. True, but I will say also like an incredible actor, incredible creator, very like very creative person. He was just like, this is so cool, and he showed us all individually the Zydrate Anatomy scene that was released. I guess I think around the same time that the trailer dropped. I kind of released it in like a two part and I watched it and I looked him dead in the eye and I said, what is this? And can I have more of it, please? And he <laughs> told me that he basically kind of knew a bit of the lore about it already. It was an off Broadway production. It was kind of <laughs> a bit chaos in itself. It was not supposed to run as long as it did, but it kept selling out tickets. People kept buying it. It was just immediately came to following. And the first time I watched it in full, it was with uh, that director and a bunch of our theater troupe. And we all sat down on like pillows and stuff in like a living room and watched it on the big screen. And it was like my little, I think I was, I don't know, like 15, 14, 15. My brain just absorbed it and was like, I don't know what this is, but this aesthetic is amazing. The music is super grungy and cool. And I was also, like I was listening to My Chemical Romance every night. Like that was my vibe. I loved it. I was like, give me the macabre every single day. I'm here for it. And um, for such a after specific that, macabre though, it's an emo, that emo is so, yeah. is, is so specific. But like also like poetic and beautiful and darkness within like light within the dark, right? Seeing both sides. And so um, I got the DVD and for about a month, I would bring it in, up to my room. I had like a portable DVD player and didn't have a TV in my room. And it 
put me to sleep for like a month. I just would put it on when I'm getting ready for bed and it would be my lullaby. Um, you, it was you, just you drift off and then you wake up and you're just watching uh, Nathan head ripping someone's guts out. Or... Absolutely. I was like, <laughs> oh, I feel so safe. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's very much an ode to the goss, the the freaks, the musical theater kids, the outcasts. Um, it's just a fun romp of the time. So that was my my introduction and That's, why I love it. So now the viewers see why uh, it was probably necessary for somebody with that kind of knowledge. It'd be like if uh, it'd be like when we did basketball or or when we did the complete owl. The Complete Al is this like weird Al thing that came out in the '80s that kind of covered his career up to like that point, so like a couple years. But, but not was... with Daniel Radcliffe. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's a. We did bit... do that movie we in that month, that though. Movie. That was way better. But yeah. this thing, this thing was basically just a bunch of music videos with these little interstitials that sort of tied together into a movie, and these guys hated it because it wasn't like a movie but i remember it being a thing i rented from the movie store and the same kind of thing like it very comforting when i was a kid to have a certain yeah but i think our discussion turned out to be positive because you're you're so passionate about it right which is exactly why we brought Cass on for this discussion i don't know if me and you would be able to talk too much about repo without Cass here to uh to guide the discussion you know we would not uh, also it's very much like you know art is art and it doesn't speak to everybody but when it does it hits you like a brick wall and it just goes through and it stays forever so it doesn't have to be good it just has to make you feel something but this is also quite enjoyable because of how wacky and insane it is right like it's it's absolutely bananas it's so low budget it reminds me of sort of like a a shitty sci-fi movie but like it's not terrible acting paired with terrible special effects and all that stuff. It's just kind of like overly gory with not a lot of like great cinematography, but you don't need it because the music is there to support the scene. The actors are all really good singers. Like there, I don't think there was anybody whose performance was jarring except for maybe uh, the, the old uh, geneticist man who's dying where his performance was like all over the place. So it's like sometimes yeah. he's belting out crazy opera numbers and it sounds amazing. And then other times he just like grumbling. spoken word rapping and He's grumbling to himself talking, in an yeah. elevator and you're like is he no, yeah well, steve, was this the first take steve why don't you <laughs> yeah. give us your like history with the movie did you did, before this week had you ever because i feel like when we talked about it, you had seen this before right i believe i have seen this before but it was when it first came out on to like video on demand there was like when you remember when, like digital cable first became sort of really big it was one of those things where it would play on those movie channels and I would catch bits and pieces of it. And I was just like, what the fuck is this? It's kind of cool. It's kind of weird. But I I wasn't really into it enough to, to sit down and watch it because I think if I had a group of people to watch it with, I, I would have given it probably a bit more of a chance because it it, it, en- it encumb- or encapsulates a lot of the things that I enjoy in, you know, campy horror, right? Your experience that you described reminds me a lot of my experience when I first heavily got into the evil dead where like none of my friends were about it and i watched it and i was like i have to get all my friends to like this somehow and i i did through the power of narcissism and uh manipulation yeah (laughs) exactly um and you're doing it all again now in the year of our, our lord 2023 um 15 years later but i i don't have like a solid memory of watching it from beginning to end and even to the point that I had seen the the viral TikTok of the uh, you know Zytrate comes in a little glass vial and like a it had been going vial? on a little, little glass, glass vial, vial. <laughs> and I didn't even know that that was from this and I'd seen it recently and then while I was watching the movie last night I was like oh yes it's from this or like I I looked it up like a, like a week ago or whatever and it's like oh that okay okay maybe this movie will rule <laughs> <laughs> um. The best song in the movie by far, though. It's very know, like, good. Because it goes, you know, against your anatomy. Yeah. Your anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> which is anywhere, I Yeah, exactly. Guess. Which is, anywhere, but he, he yeah. chooses the most sexual area of the body. Right uh, next yeah, to of the, course. Right in your inner thigh at the very top. Yeah. Right, right where Ray it feels Robert's the best. Gross. They should They're have, all uh, gross, honestly. <laughs> they should have delved into that stuff a little bit more, I think. Maybe not. The yeah, Zydrate but I mean, it's... no. The if they all get their genitals removed and replaced, 
We'll As get we to that point. Opera, we get to we the, talked I mean, about this. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should do like a, a very short summarization of what the movie is about. It I takes need place... to give you my oh, history. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yes. Give you history. of the film. You're just going to steamroll me already. We're, we're just the well, I want to steamroll through the just like the basic <laughs> okay. idea of the movie, but go ahead, yeah. My history is similar to yours, Steve. In 2008, um, you, Cass, you and my cousin Ronan are very are about the same age. And Ronan was was raised in a household where, like, it, so for me, I was raised in a household where I was allowed to watch whatever I want, but I watched RoboCop, and then I couldn't handle any gore or, or horror or, or action or it, like it. It all it, that messed me up. But he was raised in a household where his he, dad was a surgeon, and he kept him in locked in the his, attic and kept him dad, sick his whole life. <laughs> his dad would just show him everything and anything. Like he was just allowed to watch whatever. But he had that like he had that constant like he would get through his nightmare and then move on to the next thing where I just like stewed in my nightmares for 25 years. And, um, anyway, I remember when this movie came out, <clears throat> I went to visit, they lived out in the country and I would go to visit their house. And he was just like, he had this like sponge of a brain when he was like 14 or 15 and he'd be able to like recite, like he knows all Bo Burnham. Like he knows how to recite Bo. all Bo Burnham. It's your generation. Yeah. It's you young millennials. Us elder millennials are like Bo Burnham. I believe we're called geriatric millennials now. <laughs> I mean, my body's really starting to hurt. So. How do you think? Listen, you guys heard me complaining about my lower back yeah, yesterday, right? We, me and Steve actually both had this. We hung out together, and then the next preceding days, we both had the same back issues. So what did we do? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't remember. At any rate, he... Uh, it's off the record. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's off the we record. We don't discuss that on mic. I remember he, um, he would quote it at me. And then I, I picked up the DVD case to be like, what is this? And in my 20s, I still couldn't handle any gore. He was like, oh, man, it's brutal. They, like, steal your organs. And then he'd be like, so I drank cubs in a little glass vial. And yeah. just say the whole song. And then I was like, I don't know. But also, I remember it being on early, like, uh, on demand. I remember it being around. And then from about the Vine era, in around, around 2011, to now, that meme of that moment... Of of Alexa Vega going a little glass vial has been has permeated the whole memosphere as I like to call it. Took nope, over. Never said that before. Um, <laughs> but that's basically my history. Just him y yell reciting, yell rapping the lyrics to all the songs at me. And I will say, if you were friends with any of us in this theater troupe, we would have all done the same thing to you. That was just a little vibe. glass vial. A little, a little glass vial <laughs> all the time. It didn't stop. But it is like, I, so then I we watched it last night together, and like I've said already, like it, I don't think, I don't think this would have the same effect on me, had I just watched it on my lunch break like I normally do with the movies. And I think, I think it like me and Steve should. We should really consider making it, maybe not for every single movie, but I'll try to come over after work on Wednesdays. Yeah, now I'm that you're close by after work, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. It makes sense to come over and watch a movie. Anybody, any any guests who are going to guest can come by. You know, Cassandra, just come by. Also, I've, I told you this off the record, and I'm telling you it's on the record to keep you honest, but I will be calling on you to be on the show frequently. So Yeah, do it. I've, have... I've already told you that you have to watch Re uh, Reefer Madness, so it's... And I, we're not just talking... Just let me know whenever. <laughs> we're not talking about Reefer Madness, the, like, 1950s black and white propaganda no. film. Uh, Cassandra, you watched me It's the to, musical with Kristen musical Bell and Kristen Alan Cumming, and it's and a satire, and it's a roller coaster that does not stop. I had and the same amazing. conversation with you where I was like, are you talking about, like, the movie where it's, like, women... Uh, crave it and men go insane for it i mean they, <laughs> it is very Reefer much madness. the the og propaganda film just like take that and put a lens under it and then make a badass like orchestra level underneath right. it. it's very good like many very uh silly. shitty film students that were my age i had a reefer <laughs> madness poster and i we in would my get room in university all the time like yeah. the same thing i wasn't a film student but i was a weed student I was a student of weed, man. Okay, so that is the that is our uh, so I have a clip to play for the body of the episode. We're gonna we're gonna shuffle this into like more structure, 
But you know, these bodies are pretty funny. So here's here, here we go. Ho 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 ho! Everybody back up because here comes the body of the episode. Oh, that's not the one where you go, wow. <laughs> no, that's later on. And by the way, did you get the MPAA for this? Because I didn't. No, I I think that uh, I think that might have died with uh, Caleb. Oh, but that recording is so good. I know. Uh, Beautiful. Anyway. Yep. In the body, yaddy, yaddy. <clears throat> so, yaddy, 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 Repo, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. <laughs> the genetic opera, is a movie that takes place in the not-so-distant future where everybody's organs are failing and basically there's a small city on an island that's surrounded by an endless graveyard <laughs> uh and every because everybody's organs are failing they have to take out loans to get new organs and also uh, simultaneously the the wealthy are becoming addicted to surgery because it's you know like a fashion statement to to have plastic surgery done uh while people are also requiring it in order to not die but because the organs are so expensive, people often default on their debts, which means that they uh, have to be repossessed. And so there is a repo man or repo men that exist in this world who will track you down like fucking Batman, <laughs> string you up and rip out your spine because you got a spine transplant or yeah, something. Yeah, you know, like when you, you rent a couch and uh, you can't pay your couch payments. And they come take Yeah, so couch. they come and rip your spine out. <laughs> it's happened to me so many times. I've lost so many couches. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, that's that's sort of the the world build that exists here. But there is a a, a single company that that essentially uh, is in charge of all of this. Uh, it's it's the company at, at the heart of the city called Genco, and they're the ones that sell you your organs, and are also the ones that send the repossessors uh, after you when you default. Uh, to get those organs back if you can't pay for them. Uh, this company is run by a very, like, mafia-style man. He's an <laughs> opera singer, and he's got psychotic Bioshock-style children who are all addicted to surgery, and just one of them just murders people constantly when he gets even remotely upset. He just has anger issues. Well, it's, he's the kind of guy that if you went into a restaurant and he asked for, like, a Diet Coke and you asked if, if Pepsi was okay, he would just immediately yeah. stab you in the chest. <laughs> multiple times yeah. um and then there's also a man who has a sick daughter who is taking care of his daughter after the mother died in childbirth and uh it turns out you know like he's out he's a repo man in disguise um but you know he's he's disguised for some reason i guess it's not like his his daughter would ever see him but i guess he just doesn't want the world to see him but it's also but sort of a, yeah it's it's also kind of a good duality for his uh uh, you know his his two personalities. He's got the the night surgeon personality, and then he's got his his dad personality. We speculated too that he sort of my head canon also is that he is went insane because of what happened, and now it's it is like a Batman villain where he's fully needs to be institutionalized. Yeah, and the it's night... a full dissociation. Like I can't take it anymore. I've done like I'm the worst, and becomes Be a monster. It feels like the Koopa Kids, as I like to call them, the Roddy, mm -hmm. the Roddy Kids, know how to like uh, get him going to turn into that like monster who can go do repos. Because later in the movie, we'll get to it. But later in the movie, they like try to rile him up, and he's just like, "No, I can't, I can't kill." But he her. also riles himself up a couple times as well, right? He. Uh... He has that one man locked in his basement <laughs> mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. Remind me to touch on this later, but I, I there's a very cool um, psychological therapy moment that Nathan unfortunately never got. Um, but remind me of like the dual personality and like trauma response link okay. later. Sure. We well, here's um, what I'll do. I'll break it up. Um, did you get? Uh, did you synopsis the plot? I mean, sort of. It's 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 a very basic plot where yeah. the girl wants to leave. She's very much like a, a Rapunzel style character. She's locked in a room. She's not allowed to leave the house because she's sick. And her father's convinced her that if she goes outside without a gas mask, she'll die. Um, but, you know, later on in the film, you discover that he's keeping her sick in order to be able to take care of her and to ensure that she's safe. But he's also keeping her sick, sick to ensure that she doesn't leave. Uh, the house because he doesn't want her to be part of the horrifying circus world that exists outside where everybody's in Marilyn Manson clothing and it's a Marilyn Manson and killing it's very each other. Marilyn Manson. 
Everybody's got at least one boob out at a, like at all times. We're all banging. I did something for you, Steve. Oh, okay. The MPAA, everyone. The MPAA. Wow. <laughs> I found the MPA. Wow. Uh, MP, wow. I found the MPAA. <laughs> it's uh, it's forty four three fifty nine. I was fully ready for this one to not be rated, like not be an official movie, but it is. Officially rated by the um, Motion Picture Association Association of America, which means that it was it's like like legally rated, which is pretty pretty rad because I could fully see this just being a thing that people put together and put out, you know. Yeah. Right. So it's an official also, movie. Fun fact: uh, Paris Hilton won a Razzie Award for this movie. So that's see, pretty oh. that both but she's surprises so good. me doesn't surprise me and it surprises well, societally me. it doesn't surprise yes. me but yeah we yeah. should say that she hadn't really been in a lot of stuff at this time and she was known as a person that is sort of like her, her persona is was a joke right like people yeah. knew her as a joke so it seems appropriate we should also mention that she plays one of the children of the gen co she plays uh, wendy koopa yeah, she plays Wendy <laughs> Koopa. Uh, she's she's the daughter of the uh, the evil billionaire uh, Miss Amber Ro Sweet, Roti Largo. Largo. Uh, yeah, she's Amber Sweet, and uh, <clears throat> she's her her deal is that she's addicted to surgery. Um, she's addicted to the knife. Addicted, addicted to, the, to knife? the knife. Addicted, <laughs> addicted to, to the, the knife. knife. Yeah. Uh, we should also mention that there is sort of a narrator character who's called the grave robber and he he sort of is persistent throughout the movie he's not really a character where he has direct influence on the plot but in a way he does but not really like the movie if you were to pull him out of the movie it could still exist but his his primary um his primary existence in the film is just kind of like Wa walking on stage with a newspaper and being like, "Holy shit! Have you heard yeah. the word?" I like it. This him... is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I likened him to like, kind of. He kind of has a Beetlejuice vibe, but Beetlejuice is sort of the central plot of that movie. He's kind of. Like... I would say he's like uh, Gonzo in a Muppet Christmas Carol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Really yeah, <laughs> I'd say that's more accurate. <laughs> yeah, he only really interacts true. with uh, with Paris Hilton's character. And um, and Shiloh and Shiloh. Yeah, he has he has one or two moments where he is present in the story, but like like I said, he doesn't necessarily need to be there. That that whole thing could still happen without him. Yeah. Um. He he's he's kind of the uh, uh, he's like Irving the explainer. He's the mm -hmm. one who is is make he's there to tell us what the heck's going on to make sure that we're not completely lost in this bananas world, because there is so much lore that you have to pre-establish in this before you walk in or else you would be completely confused as to what's going on without you can still be confused while we're after the, all yeah. of the exposition you can yeah. still be confused while we're on the subject of paris hilton quickly i'm just looking at her imdb because i'm trying to remember what that reality show she was on with. simple life yeah simple life um but she's in a short with the Irwin family uh and uber eats so they're just commercials obviously but one of them is called that's so crikey and I thought that that was worth mentioning because of how ridiculous that is. That's like, so crikey. Like, like instead that's of that's so hot. Incredible. So oh, if you think about it, you're like, saying that's, that's so, crazy. so crikey. <laughs> I think that's that's funny to me. That's humor, <laughs> that is humorous to me. Well, she had a really as long good as it's humorous it to somebody out there. That's hot. Yeah. yeah, I love it. That's hot. I love Paris. Um. So I mean, I, I guess we can kind of walk through the plot. I I I, I do like. I want to talk about each of the children individually because I think that they are weirdly interesting, all of them. Mm -hmm. um, they do very much remind me of the, the mad people under the sea in Bioshock where you're like exploring very uh, much that. whatever that city was called in, in uh, what was it called? The city in Bioshock. Century City like the, or something? The, wait, oh, the Rapture. Rapture. It's called Rapture, Rapture yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I'm Andrew so Ryan, and I made this city to be a utopia under the sea, and everybody went insane within a year. Almost immediately. Yeah. yeah. Also deals with some crazy plastic surgery in that Yeah, game there's as a, well. a character who is addicted to giving people plastic surgery. I remember there's a recording in that game where the doctor is performing surgery, and he's like, no, it's 
you know, it's I did such a good on the nose. Maybe I should uh, it's so I should work good. on her eyes as well. And the nurse is like, you can't do that, doctor. Doctor, stop cutting. Doctor. And then he goes, stop cutting. Stop. And, it's like, the, <laughs> and then like everything blacks out around you and you only have yeah. like the blast of your shotgun to like see to anything it, yeah. coming. It's so scary. Bioshock is rules. amazing. Yeah. That's also a move like a game that should be made into a movie. Like it that, should be. it lends the itself lore is well amazing. to. If yeah, we're getting a if we're getting a, f- a Fallout TV show that's going to ruin Fallout for everybody, we should definitely have a Bioshock TV show or movie because at least the aesthetic of that world is a lot more entertaining than something like ruining Fallout will be just a boring guy in a desert. Well, the, the thing about and Bioshock, you can't is... really ruin an underwater world. I would say that the thing people. about Bioshock that lends itself to television or movies is that it has a very strict and straightforward and rudimentary storyline that they could just follow as a template and like the last of us how they basically just made the game into a show they could do that with bioshock whereas fallout it's like there's one billion side quests that are more interesting than the main story in any Fallout game. So the, which one are you going to choose? the storylines in the Fallout games are always like, you got to find something that's going to help save the world. And that's You'll find your pretty son. Much it. All, the, all of the fun of Fallout are all the little weird places you find, you know? Yeah. Um, this, this, this whole sort of concept did remind me a lot of Bioshock though which I think is why I was I was into it so much because Bioshock is one of my favorite um, video game series and uh, one of the children whose name was Pavi Pavi or Ogre Ogre (laughs) from Skinny Puppy Skinny Puppy's a band right it is a band Uh, that's that's exactly what my cousin said to me today he said (laughs) Pavi is Ogre from Skinny Puppy and I felt even though Skinny Puppy's like an 80s band, I was still felt like a geriatric man. I was like, what are these kids' words you're saying at me? <laughs> it's also spelled O-H, capital G-R-E, like ogre. Yeah. Ogre. Ogre. I love that. Oh. That's pretty good. It's very funny. That's like, that's like the very guitarist right. for Nirvana, Pat Smear. Pat Bless. Smear. And also the Foo Fighters. Pat Smear. Smear. Jeez. Stunning. Please welcome to the stage Pat <laughs> Smear. And everyone's like, what? Did Stunning. he say that wrong? Uh, <laughs> it's a great drag name. Well, you, well, it is. It is. But his character it specifically reminds me of that plastic surgery character from Bioshock yes. so much because Very it's bad. the same concept. It's like and... he's got a face stretched out. And you know what? The the first Bioshock game came out around the, the time that I think the, the musical was coming out. So there's a there is a chance that Bioshock inspired the musical. I think that I wouldn't both, see how it couldn't. I think that both characters were inspired by Bruce Campbell and Escape from LA though, because it's that's another the plastic surgery planet in yeah. escape from la is very much reminds me of this whole fucking for sure it's like a, it's a very kooky idea that is like always shocking to it's, think about it's a addic- being addicted to plastic surgery is like it's it's a, it's a real thing you see those people that look like aliens yeah it's putting a mirror on like actual reality but as a horror concept it's so fucking like nightmarish it's unsettling. It's like it reminds because me, they think they look good. He's got a mirror with him at all times. Like the entire know. movie. I was so into he's it. He's got a face <laughs> stapled onto he his face. He also has different faces yeah. from multiple people. I just want you to keep that in mind. He switches them out all the time where yeah. this face is coming from. I kind of wish yeah. there was a scene where he gets like a a moment where he's in like a room full of mirrors, like a, a fun house of mirrors, and he's just swapping faces out. That'd be dope. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. Just, for like this ripping movie. them off and putting other ones on. And you I never. Also- you never really get to see his real face. You just get to see him like go behind a curtain for a second and come out with like a weird new face on. Yeah. I will say sick. also it just to touch on the point of kind of where this came from, because yes, maybe it was Bioshock, but uh, uh, according to the lore, um, when Darren or I'm um, sorry, uh, Terrence who plays a great robber uh, originally made this, he was like a rocker dude and he had a friend of his, who was basically getting evicted and had no money and was like moving out his stuff. And he had this idea of like, well, what do you have left? Like if they can take everything from you. Well, at least they got my own. Well, like body parts, that's all you have left. You just yeah. have what is on your body. And that was kind of a spark of. Uh, I just looked it up to be uh, 
to make sure that I wasn't talking about my butt. It turns out I was because Bioshock <laughs> came out in 2007 and um, the the musical itself was written in 2002. So okay. yes. if anything, and... this inspired that character in Bioshock. I still posit that the concept of a, a weird plastic. I know, but you will you live and die by your theories, Jason. It's true. And you know, you'll never admit that your ideas are foolish. <laughs> you know, I don't have one this week, That's but right. we got to We got to hear it. We got to, you know, we got to hear it. No. No. It's him. Run. Run. He's got his his theories. <laughs> there are... Okay. Well, that that one goes That's on and beautiful. on and on. <laughs> it's I a... made a shorter one for you, you know. I know. Well, I like the extended version. Yeah. <laughs> the extended The cut. director's cut. That's my director's cut, yeah. Um, I don't uh, really have just since we played the segment. I don't really have any theories other than like my head canon because it's a musical. You just you're you're kind of forced to fill in a lot. And actually, Cass, will you tell us a little bit about what was cut from this movie? Because you said there was a song that's cut. Also, I yeah I understand that this is the second in what I guess is was supposed to be a trilogy. Yes, it was supposed to be. Uh, okay, so I kind of have to step back a bit in the history of how this came to be. Um, basically, Terrence Rocker Dude made a bunch of songs and then ended up making what was the, I guess, original idea of Repo, which was called uh, The Necromancer's Debt. Uh, and that was the first uh, iteration of this being a stage play. And over time i think it was in like 2002 i want to say is when that kind of started to be fully formed uh yeah. and this the way that this guy and his partner at the time they they were the ones that were creating things together and then he moved on to do other things with someone else um they have this thing that they it feels like they have all of these ideas all at once and they have a bunch of threads leading them together and they don't have an editor. And right. so that's why at this point, when we see Repo in the movie, we miss a lot of things because things have been cut or shifted around or kind of switched like in, oh, actually I won't say this yet because it's a major spoiler. Um, not a spoiler, uh, Roddy Largo was actually not the father in the original. Um, he was one of the brothers and Amber was his daughter. Um, so very different dynamics, all kind of attaching to the same theme. In this specific movie, like the main things that were cut out, I will talk about one later when we get like to the very, very end. Um, we have scenes cut of the grave robber and Shiloh um, having moments of connecting with uh, Marnie, who was her mother who passed. Um, she was like stolen away out of her house. That's crazy. And we don't see any of that other than, <laughs> I guess the things that were left in the film for a cool shot that now without the context makes absolutely no sense. Um, yeah, there yeah. were multiple, multiple songs cut, multiple things switched around and relationships switched around. And now we have this kind of mess. That okay. is beautiful. It, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. The way that it was explained to me is that, like, the comic book stuff is sort of can be put together and is like a prequel. You could, he, they, they, I, the way I understand the way it was explained to me is like he, he, they sort of wanted that to be like its own thing. Those flashbacks in comic book form. Yes. Then the movie is the movie, right? Obviously, is there a director's cut that adds those cut scenes and everything? Uh, not a director's cut, but if you get the DVD, you have like a bunch of like bonus deleted okay. scenes and deleted songs and all that stuff. You also have a really great song um, called uh, Come Up and Try My New Parts, which is uh, Amber Sweet, Paris Hilton full solo song. And she sounds amazing on it. It's very hot. That's hot. Um, and I don't think incredible that's, song. I don't think that's on the cast recording that's on Spotify. Not, OK. And you got to then... dig for it. <laughs> Spoil sort of spoiler alert. Yeah, deep, deep. Without really spoiling too much, um, at the very end of the movie, there's sort of like Genko continued on because the Roddy kids sort of 
continue the legacy and there was supposed to be like a, a yeah. sequel it's like the end of a summer camp movie or whatever yes. where it's yeah. like a freeze you flame get and the, everything. what everybody what happens to everybody and they yeah. pretty much all survive and... like luigi grew up to be a lawyer <laughs> after stabbing all of his yeah. competition yeah um yeah no it was it i think the idea of it being a three-parter kind of came to them when they realized that they were actually being able to make a movie i don't think that was the original actual idea um because it was a stage play, it was fairly successful with a really good cult following. Then they got Darren Lynn Bowsman to direct it. Um, and then we we're like, wow, we could we could do more. I have so much to add to the story. And then they scrapped all of that and then made a different movie series entirely called The Devil's Carnival, which I still have not seen, uh, but has way less of a budget, but still has incredible actors in it. Like crazy, crazy names that you would not expect them well, to be. Well, that was going to be, gonna be my next sort of question like it's crazy that this had such a cult following usually usually there's some like we're in the era now it's what been what 15 years since this was a, was a movie and yeah 25 years since it was written 20 years since it was written what year is it holy fuck 20, it's almost 25 years. but you know yes. we're in this era where these things these kinds of things from early internet and the this era that they're being remade or brought back and to have sequels and i wonder i was wondering what what happened to all these people because it seemed like there was enough fanfare at the time to at least put out a lower budget thing or p perhaps some sort of some sort of sequel or comic book was there anything like that? At well, all? they are still doing it. I think Repo just kind of, I think from my understanding of seeing how the lore and the fan base kind of played out, I think Repo became bigger than anticipated. And when you have someone who is like, oh, I have all these ideas, and then you have something that people just love and respect and don't, I don't think we want it to change. I don't need yeah. more in that storyline you gave me something crazy and chaotic and that's all i need it to be and so those people went okay i'm gonna make something new and they have they did devil's carnival they did um it's american murder song which i was just listening to recently i did not know that existed so they are still creating things it's just in a different uh world that's cool but i think that like trilogy idea was very much like we we're very excited and then it just got tossed away right so, yeah yeah there it... is no there is no extended uh repo uh universe there was a book written in 2009 which is a year after this movie came out uh, or it was pu published in 2009 called the repossession mambo which is a similar idea uh it's about repossessing hearts after people get heart transplants and then the character who is the repo man <laughs> ends up having the same thing happen to him where his heart is getting repossessed. So he basically fights back kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really remember that movie being all that great. <laughs> I think I prefer this movie to that movie. It looks like, um, yeah, he went on to do the do two devil's carnival things. And then yeah. this American murder song, which is a TV series. That's the most recent. I'm yeah. curious about, have you seen the, um, I'm looking at the IMDB right now for Terrence Zudich. Yeah. Zudich. Uh, Zadunich, I Z think. Is, um, his, the short... just <laughs> Is the short just a condensed short version of this movie, or is it, um, what is oh, it? Oh, for Repo itself? Yeah, there's, there's... I think it, they shot a promo for it, so originally, um... Holy shit, sorry, Michael Rooker plays the Repo Man in this... Oh, yeah. Do you want to know something insane? Yeah, I want to um, know something insane. <laughs> so, uh, the Repo Man, who is Nathan, who is played by um, Anthony Stewart Head, was not originally supposed to be him. Um, Darren Lynn Bowsman really wanted um, Barry What's-His-Face from Rocky Horror. Okay. And then he actually watched the episode of Buffy, that was a musical episode, and watched Anthony Stewart Head in it and was like, Changed my mind. That's the one I want. And uh, later on in Devil's Carnival, Barry actually ended up being in that. And he is still apparently salty <laughs> for not being cast mm -hmm. as Nathan as the Repo Man. Um, well, so that's very fun. I'm sure that uh, Barry Bros uh, Bostwick, Bostwick would have been fine. But I really like Devil's Carnival. Uh, 
Yeah, I really liked who they picked as the Repo Man because you don't see him oh, in, a, so in a ton good. of like. He, he's in a lot of TV, right? You don't see him in movies very often, and when you do, it usually is made for TV movies and stuff like that. Yeah, and I'm sure he does a lot of Broadway, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. I, I would be shocked now that I've heard him sing so amazingly. He's definitely the best performer in the movie. Uh, well, for sure. In him, my opinion. Him and Anthony Head and Bill Mosley. Bill Mosley, I didn't realize till I was doing a deep dive today that he's basically, the, you know, um, uh, Rob Zombie has his, his wife, who's his female muse, but Bill Mosley is sort of his man muse because he plays He's a Otis. like horror movie icon. He's man a horror muse. movie icon, but he's also You know a Otis. muse doesn't have to have a gender, right? Okay, well... Can all be a muse? <laughs> I think of... Sorry, that's on me. That's that's <laughs> old antiquated thought patterns. Um, I recognize that I typically would see a muse as a woman because I'm a fucking cisgendered fucking... Because you're a disgusting man. <laughs> disgusting How man. How dare you? <laughs> At any rate, Bill Mosley, clearly one of um, uh, Rob Zombie's muses because he plays Otis in one of the best American trilogies of all time maybe not but he's in uh you know he's in host of a thousand corpses devil rejects and uh uh Night of the third? living yeah he's a he's a horror legend he's... Third one <laughs> three it's... three of satan yeah i can't remember i don't think i've seen three all from them, to hell be honest. yeah three from um hell. and i love horror movies and watch so many of them but i i find rob zombie to be uh a little bit difficult He's just, hard to get into. His Halloween a, movies were too much for just me. Just as a tangent, a little tangent of an old Rob Zombie is in the same couple of months. I he goes by Robert Zombie. Robert now. Zombie. Robert. <laughs> Good J old Zombie. Bob. Uh, Trying to Bob get that Zombie. Oscar. Yeah. I watched Bob Zombie. <laughs> Bob Zombie. Bob Zombie. Uh, I watched <laughs> fucking House of a Thousand Corpses, which is like it's a thing. It was one of those things I was afraid to watch as a kid, as a teenager, because I was like, it was the scariest shit ever. But the reality yeah. is, it's just this weird movie that has a just really goofy. cool horror ten minutes at the end. Uh, then I watched The Monsters from 2022 or 2021. I love The Monsters. Did you watch The Monsters? The Robert Zombie the Robert version? I, Zombie did, I don't think I... I only watched, like, the, the old school television show. Now, yeah. if you're a fan of the old show, you're going to love the movie. I okay. wasn't... I. I don't know if that's necessarily My true. My dad loved the Monsters movie, and he loved the Monsters TV but show. But that doesn't mean that anything. That is science. Right? That what is I'm our saying, data that we're going on. What yeah. I'm saying about this situation is the Monsters movie is basically the first 75% of Host of a Thousand Corpses, but for kids, is what the Monsters right. movie is. I so remember seeing a, like a trailer. It. I remember seeing I a trailer. I took seven tries to get... I took seven different tries to get through it. I, I remember it seeing like a trailer. I to be like... I remember seeing a trailer for that movie in black and white and thinking, oh, cool, this looks really cool. And then seeing the color version of the trailer and being like, this looks like a big bar. It's of very shit. colorful. So <laughs> all you have terrible. to do then is just like change the settings on your TV yeah, and turn all and white, of the color yeah. off <laughs> yeah. and then watch it in black and white. It, it does have bad. It does have Jorge Garcia, who played um, what's his face on Lost, the big guy on Lost. Mm. Oh, Hugo. Hugo. He played Hugo. And it was interesting to see him. And it's very much like a cavalcade of uh, Hollywood horror. Um, Hollywood right. horror. I mean, I haven't seen it, stuff. so I can't say that it's bad, but it didn't look. You good. might even <laughs> like it, Steve. It's very like he, he takes a lot Add of artistic liberties, but it's very true to like it's true to the, the the content. I think he wanted to make a whole franchise out of it, but I think the the COVID of it all sort of like a hamstring the movie them. has covid you're like the movie Ugh. has covid the movie feels COVID. like it has covid you get yeah. brain covid if you watch it <laughs> oh no the worst kind yeah. <laughs> sorry that's my my that's my tangent about how the monsters is house of a thousand corpses for kids beautiful <laughs> oh i didn't realize that's what you're <laughs> that, that, was my, that was my that was my point yeah i didn't know that that was your your thesis uh okay uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Back to the movie. Um, I really enjoy the fact that the genetic opera is a is an opera that they're they're all singing, but it's also the name of the TV show in the in the universe, right? It's the it's the, they're yeah they're basically the like the selling tickets for this opera yeah. the entire time, um, and then obviously at you know in the last chapter in the last act of three. Uh, we actually get to see the opera itself. But, like, the whole thing is, like, get your tickets, come yeah. hang out with us, get some new implants, and have and a got, good time. Uh, 
Blind Betty or whatever her name is. What was her name? Blind Meg. Blind, Blind Meg. Meg, yeah. Uh, Blind hologram Be- eyes. Blind Betty. <laughs> She's so <laughs> little <laughs> Yeah. But um, Blind Betty had a child. Ding, ding, that shit was blind. Ding, ding, <laughs> everybody's blind. Uh, but I think she was also an interesting character, and she had a good voice as well. I think her her moments were pretty, pretty good. She is uh, the original Christine Daae from Phantom of the Opera, who Andrew Lloyd Webber was obsessed with, and Andrew Lloyd Webber is basically the Phantom and hired her to be Christine because he was just so obsessed with her. Right. Um, and that's how she started. And then also, this is her first uh, film debut. She's only ever been on Broadway and on stage, and oh, they got her to be. She was pretty good. Blind Meg. It's kind of difficult to go from stage performing to film without, you know, any kind of formal training. And I know this isn't like a huge, like, crazy role, but you know, it's it does it's cool that they they're paying attention, right? They're like, yeah. what would be an, who would be a very interesting person to have as this specific role, and they picked somebody that is probably the most interesting pick right yeah i also think too like that you can really kind of see it when you watch the movie of like people who have been on a stage singing and people who have only done film because if you listen to just the soundtrack of this movie it those people are giving life like they are super committed they are making acting choices behind the mic um and then when you see it in like kind of film world some of them really nail it and some of them kind of fall short because they're acting like a film actor, not like a, a musical stage actor. Yeah. And you can really see it, especially in uh, Anthony playing Nathan. You can see it in Meg. Um, you can see it now. sometimes like when he really gives it, yeah. but like, I think he's just, <laughs> he was very much committed to a character that he was playing and he believed it. And but I wasn't that. he, uh, <laughs> He was a legit opera singer. I was gonna a legit opera singer, yeah. He's also, also a legit fellas. actor, a legit yeah, actor who's been in yeah. like in like Oscar he's a legend. award-winning shit. He, the thing that I think of is when you see people like um, Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart be be in TV and movies, and they're fucking just killing it. They're That's a theater actor it because they're they're able to they're playing to like the audience of like directors and stagehands that are playing that are like watching them just do a scene. Versus an actor who's like went to acting school or took acting lessons and is just very trying to like inhabit a character. Yeah, I mean the reverse can be said, right? Like where there's somebody who has so much experience yeah. being on the stage and then they they don't they, they translate crumble. as well to yeah, to close ups sure. and stuff because they're overacting. They're playing to like the the back of the theater, so to speak, while they're you have to know how acting to, to a camera, right? Feel like especially that kind of like this is so elevated, right? Like this is camp. This is stakes are high everything's crazy you have to be able to both sell it as if there's a big theater but also at the same time balance that with there is a camera directly in my face so i have to take all of this emotion and shrink it but still have it be like a live wire that is being read through and i think honestly anthony stewart had specifically in this movie absolutely crushed that um yeah, Cass, and have his you vocals ever, are crazy. Have you ever had to like, like, what's the biggest audience you've played for? Have you ever like, <laughs> have you ever like made live it... television? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I did a uh, uh, the CBC Dorothy show forever ago, so I was uh, on reality TV singing to the masses. You know, you've so never... big big audience. I think you're gonna say singing to the man, singing to the man, singing to the man, stick it to the man, and sing it to the man. <laughs> now That's I've uh, we don't have to dwell on it if you don't want to. I did know that about you. I did, I did, um, because I knew you sang. I looked up your YouTube, and then oh, the olden times. It just sort of <laughs> happened. Like I didn't, I didn't want to be a times. weirdo about it, but I didn't know how to like tell you that I knew this about you. Oh, that's um, fine. But I watched your shit, and you're extremely good at singing oh thank you i like to sing it's but nice what i noticed is if i had done something like you how old were you like 17 or 18 17, yeah like if i had done something like that when i was 17 i wouldn't shut up about it like i would but i i've known you now <laughs> for a minute and you don't really talk about it no. is this just something you wanted to sort of we, we move past it is, or do you want to talk about it at all because i'm fine i, I don't it's... want to put you on the spot no that's fine i mean like for me it's it was a crazy time and I'm like very thankful for it. It was, it was just a whirlwind. And I, 
I think it was my first kind of insight of what fame could look like and what it can do to people. And I like moved to the city right after and I would have like people recognize me at like my day job or like walking around the mall. And I was like, I love that you love this, but like, what, <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. So I'm just trying to buy some dips and dots and peas. So yeah. and I was also my a bubble kid. tea. Leave me alone. Yeah, I, yeah, I was true, a kid yeah. and I was, you know, like it, it was all like all branding and you gotta be cutesy and you gotta be this. Meanwhile, I'm back at home watching Repo the Genetic Opera. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it, it's... That's why I it's was curious a, about it's this. It's a very cool, interesting thing. I don't really know how to talk about it properly without just, it just it's, I guess, rambling? No, I it, it seemed like there might have been some but might have been some parallels with uh, with Blind Mag and, and Shiloh and, like, your experience with oh, for sure. the industry. And, for sure. It's know, very much like I... A, a big overseeing eye owns you and can make you do whatever you want. That is fame. That is what that is. And it's terrifying. Also, um, it's interesting you brought that up too with the uh, thing with Blind Meg and Shiloh as well. I always related to Shiloh when I was a kid, obviously, because I was a kid. Um, but seeing their mirror of each other, of being like this kind of trapped, caged bird that's just beautiful and stunning and does the thing because they have no choice. Um, but yeah, it's I, honestly like it is a, a very simplified version of kind of what that feels like. That's how I um, feel about uh, Luigi. Luigi, because I want to stab people so badly so all bad, the time. Listen, <laughs> we all gotta just Steve, hold it in. Steve, <laughs> what I've done here is it's called a it's called a gotcha moment. It's called a gotcha interview. Oh, shit. Gotcha. So that whole thing was just to get me to admit that I want to yes. stab people. Yes, that's that's. Call what the I also want to say that you guys said the word "I" so many times during that, and every time you said the word "I," I wanted to go "I remember." <laughs> also, I will say I don't know if you can see because my camera's really bad, but I'm wearing um, my earrings have eyeballs oh, on eyeballs them. On so oh I, remember. I, remember. I remember. I remember the hologram eyes and everything. Well, thank yeah. you for giving us some insight on that. I have been. Oh um, yeah. I have been curious about it, but I didn't want to be like, I saw you on the TV thing. I, I, you wouldn't be the first person. It is totally okay. I tried to come up with an organic way to reveal to you that I had seen it. And I don't, I, we don't have to like, I, that. that's that's all I want to know. It's not all I want to know. I have a million Sick. questions, but I don't want to, I'm not, I, don't, I just don't want you to be uncomfortable. I just, I, but I was. Oh, Jason, quit rambling. Good Lord. Sorry. But I was well, watching a movie. No, watching this movie. I couldn't help but think about your experience with a very weird yeah. parallel. Anyway. Well, also on that note, me. I think like it's, I think that's also why it hit musical theater kids as hard as it did too. Because, because like, think about like, any small town that you're yeah. in, if you're in theater or you're in the public eye, even if you're like, you know, like big fish in a small pond, everybody knows everything. And yeah. you are kind of under a spotlight, even if it's not on a mass scale. People know who you are. People are watching you all the time. People idolize you for no reason other than the fact that you have a talent of some sort that maybe they would love to have. It's it's crazy. So, of course, the musical theater kids would be like, I understand I understand. And then, these and then also, the, the, the big, the big junior high play at the end of the year or high school play at the end of the year. It was always like, "Oh, you're doing Greece. You're doing Greece again." Greece lightning. And everybody's like, "Mine oh. was The Crucible." Oh, shit. Mm. And I but played the, oh, the judge. It, it, could you imagine in high school or, or or whatever, like bringing this play up? Is like we want to do Repo. Oh, I that was my dream. And the if I could have like, had, if I could have done that, I would have been like, "Give me." I give think me there the would score. be a way you could get away with it without it being like, because you could just use red streamers or red whatever. Streamers. For the yeah, yeah, make they it do our Sweeney artsy. Todd. High schools do yeah. Sweeney Todd, I'm sure. Also, there's a lot of parallels uh, between Sweeney Todd and this as well, which is yeah. also my other musical hyperfixation. This is the tale of Sweeney Todd. Um, if you if you don't mind, I might go on a mini rant because it is also related. But we're yes. talking about this whole idea of like. Shiloh, Blind Mag, Caged Birds that are whatever. Mm -hmm. In Have you guys only seen the Tim Burton version of Sweeney Todd? I've seen the Sweeney Todd, uh, that version, and I've seen the Office version. Hilarious. <laughs> you mean where Andy's cell phone keeps going off? <laughs> yes. yes. It must be a little bird in my pocket. Yeah. I've so, silenced the bird. In, uh, in 
the original um, full Broadway production. Uh, if you're familiar with Sweeney, you know the story of Joanna, and she sings a song called Green Finch and Linnet Bird. And in the Tim Burton version, it's kind of cut cut and dry makes sense to the plot where she is, you know, captured and not allowed to leave her room and very much almost like a collector's item on a shelf of this really pervy dude. And she sings a song being like, how, how do you sing? Like, it, like, I don't understand. You're in a cage. You can't fly. You can't do anything, but you keep singing and you give me faith to still be able to do something. Why, how do you see beauty? Um, in the original um, it is just told out flat right by the guy who actually sells her her bird that they blind the birds before they put them in the cage and they can't see. Okay. So they are not singing. They are screaming oh my <laughs> the God. entire time. The and that is also so uh, poignant to this as well. Ties right around to both Shiloh and Blind Meg, both being in that cage. Uh, I told you about Marnie's corpse in the house uh for people who are listening who don't understand what i'm talking about that's okay um in the house there are multiple kind of shots of this uh kind of glass uh see-through moment that looks like a portrait and almost like a mannequin behind it it should be mentioned that there are holograms of marnie all through everywhere this, like she house. is like a shrine in every moment of yeah. this house because nathan is just he can't deal with his grief because nathan and is insane guys. he's insane he's killing people he's doing well, just quickly thing. did we did you in your synopsis steve did you mention that there is the like why what happens because... i briefly mentioned it yeah like his wife is pregnant and he basically ha has to save one or the other during childbirth we later not even that much later figure out that uh the owner of gene co Brody. like secretly poisoned the medicine that he was giving his wife and yeah, that's what because actually he was killed in love him. with her originally and nathan stole her away from him and he couldn't handle that okay yeah he, he's a real uh he sucks he's got that real beta male energy <laughs> he's an incel yeah he's, he's kind an incel he basically blames narcissist incel like i if you, i can't have it burn it to the ground but he's also one of those people yeah he's, where he's like how could someone not want to be with me i have mm -hmm. Every like, piece of I wealth. I got all the livers and, and hearts you could ever yeah. want. Baby. You Why would anybody? Me say. But then, you know, and then you, yeah, and he can also sing, but then you look at Nathan, who actually cares about humanity and is trying yeah. to help people. But he was a know. doctor originally trying to actually do his job and save people. And then he has to become the night surgeon. Sorry, sorry yes. Cass, back to what you're saying. I've just, I so, wanted to just no, that's perfect. It. Yeah. So, going off that context, obviously, Marnie is poisoned and killed nathan becomes the repo man under basically the pretense that uh roddy will be like i will tell your daughter that you just saved that all this happened or you can work for me and now i'm you're under uh my iron fist so um marnie's body is in that house it is not talked about in this entire movie this is only side sideways lore yeah, um you do and see it multiple times you yeah, and her, I, but I you, you don't really that know that it's happening actually her it's kind of like maybe hinted yeah at i thought like it was an shot. artistic choice or something you know where it's like he's seeing all these holograms he's put up but there's this one that is like it's real he's seeing her as real kind of thing but like a mannequin um, if you also notice uh <laughs> okay, yeah. in those or shots whenever you see marnie <laughs> she has a blindfold over yeah, her eyes yes. that, yeah. um if you look at this uh on the timeline that is very wishy-washy of the 17 years before um, it is, I guess, canonically known that the night that uh, Meg went into surgery to not be blind anymore and to she had a beautiful voice. Roddy wanted her to work for her, uh, wanted him to work for her. Um, she went into surgery. Marnie went into labor. She died. Those eyes uh... were stolen from Correct. Marnie and put into Meg and it's like that extra sense of like I control you this was your best friend you're not gonna leave that's my grasp so important yeah that is important because then it would mean that Nathan anytime he looked at, at Meg he Meg like, he'd be seeing the, the eyes, eyes of his, yeah. his true love yeah. and the way that he also looks at Shiloh too he always talks about like you look exactly like her and I like I think I made the right decision but I don't know if I did like he's constantly tormented with Crazy. like haunting figures. So, so wait, are the hologram eyes in the play then or? 
did the mom uh, yeah. yeah 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 okay. um yeah absolutely she is like crazy crazy eyes crazy eyes crazy eyes <laughs> They're so pretty. That's what they call me. They look like uh, it looks like something that would be in Resident Evil, like the the umbrella virus, but in your eyeballs. (laughs) Kind (laughs) of, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that the if you go back far far enough in this world, the umbrella virus, the T virus. That's what happens. Yeah, this this is a fucking movie. (laughs) This is Resident Evil, Raccoon City, like like six decades later. Very it's very we talked about how like the setting for this 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 like whole world is very like <clears throat> like neo goth um c- cyberpunk a little steampunk little yep. little um uh victorian oh know? yeah super yeah, victorian. Like a, but that's also very goth right it, yeah. like those victorian hints it almost looks like something out of the it, something between the schumacher and burton batman movies yeah yeah. mixed with um something that you would see in like almost like a ninja turtles movie and uh the super Mar- i mentioned the super mario the super Brothers mario movie, movie yeah the it's got it's got that like grunginess it's but it's also got the it's like the back alley of gotham is the whole city basically the narrows everything feels dirty but with like, like this beautiful like soft focus lens yeah, yeah. Um, lots of neon <laughs> and like the whole, focus the whole lens is used like steve mentioned it last night in porn movies but it's also used in <laughs> yeah. like everything that was on showcase i think this movie was true shown it's very on showcase. showcase i i've just rewatched all the trailer park boys oh man there's lightning outside right now it's fucking looks great um i rewatched I all of remember. Trailer- <laughs> <laughs> oh, i'm the repo man um, i'm the night surgeon <laughs> old canadian oh, old canadian tv from this era had that soft focus on it as well like the trailer park it's because board. it's used to hide shittiness that's what it does that's what the soft focus is for it's to hide the seams of things that are not, not quite good. great and this was in the era where see where um high definition was the norm so they would just put a soft focus well, filter is, on it. so they're not actually filming this it this is minutes softly. before like high def was like 2009 this is yeah, moments right before, before high def. this was probably filmed in high def it was but definitely they, filmed on they, a they were like oh camera. god this looks <laughs> fucking terrible so they they're like we can't have this be hd we need to we need to soften everything because you know the costumes are not bad but they're not great and like no. the more you look at them you're like this looks like a power rangers villain. there's a full scene where you can actually see a, a, a green screen for a moment where a hologram <laughs> should be should have been it's yeah. that bad um it's like when you watch I... tng and you just see like black uh gaffer tape on screens to get oh, rid of reflections sure. of, of light and stuff. Sad. yeah <laughs> um can i tell you guys a cool story i love yes. about cool the production yeah. of this so um darren lynn bowsman uh saw this musical off broadway uh and fell in love with it and wanted to do it talked to the guys and was like let's let's go he had just gotten off of saw two three and i think four and he tried to pitch it multiple, multiple times, including the pilot that maybe you guys have seen online of when they were trying to pitch it. Uh, and Lionsgate said, okay, sure. Uh, and Darren didn't trust them to fund it. So he funded it 90% out of his own pocket um, to make yes. this movie happen, um, which is crazy. And also why you have like, crazy cool cgi things and then also just like insane really low budget stuff like so bad you're like wait a minute so bad he literally was like trying to like get people to see this movie he was like passing it like posters to like college kids being like hey we made this movie come we're doing a film festival come see it um and when they were really low on budget not only did paris hilton donate a bunch of her wardrobe to this cast uh just because she believed in this project so much um but she also made a whole like weird like press moment uh just to gain money to continue to fund the film but like let's not pretend like this is a good a well-made indie movie it's not like we're talking about the room or neil breen or Bird no Demet. it's no, got yeah. some Sharknado. it's got some stuff like, it's behind better it than for all sure. that stuff you know no, I, yeah i'll never say that it's 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 shit but what i'm saying is that it, it's very clearly low budget right it, it feels yeah. like something 
like a very high budget episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I'm not just yes. saying that because or like a like a Giles Doctor Who in, in like twenty <laughs> exactly like exactly fifteen yeah. or whatever. Like you're like oh okay yeah. cool CGI it feels stuff. like a high budget like a, a two parter of a of a series that they got a lot of money for that those specific two episodes and they they put it put it all in and you can yeah. see it. But yeah. you know there there are things that that mm-hmm. stand out as just odd and awkward because they even refer to uh, the Zydrate as the glow. But then they added a digital glow to the thing <laughs> instead of just getting a glow stick from like the dollar store and, and some you know, really swap. bad digital squibs, some really bad like blood yeah. effects. But then also really good, really good ones, like, Horror really effects, good. Yeah. Like yeah. it was, it was a range from bad, bad digital squibs to like good horror practical. To, well, like, like when theater, Paris Hilton's little forehead also, is falling down, it looks amazing. Like it's it looks amazing. seamless. It's it also looks the great. last yeah. shot that they filmed. Apparently, that was like their last wrap. But then, like, that was but then that scene Hilton's also face has falling off. Theater, like theater camp, theater special effect, where when her face is falls off, a piece of like meat falls on the ground. Oh and yeah, then her full Can't nose. Can't be prosthetics. Her full nose just exists. When if your face falls off, it's gonna. That's be like, coming with it. You know what I mean? Like this part That's right cartilage. here. Is Maybe that would have been too horrifying. I don't know. I, I think, think they didn't have the budget expensive. to <laughs> take yeah. that or no. We all know it was the budget, guys. I'm just saying. But it, like, it, it looks the very, thing is, it looks it, very good. They just hide things as best as they can when yes. they're not good. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I don't know if anyone's going to complain about the nose being there still when you know there's a weird CGI bug that looks like shit. It's so <laughs> bad. It's so bad. Yeah. But I think that's a beautiful thing about this movie is that like it brings you so quickly into a world of chaos and not knowing what you're getting into that you don't care. Yeah. Like, you don't care that it looks bad or that, like, these no. little moments didn't work. It doesn't matter because the things that worked were amazing. Yeah. And, like, were super cool. Generally, I think, like, as we, we talk about on the show a lot, like, we do get a little bit nitpicky sometimes. And the only time we get nit- nitpicky is when the movie is failing at at the other job that it's trying to do, which is yeah. to entertain you. Sneakers. And, and you, can, you can basically forget logical inconsistency or any kind of poor effect if the Throw movie the is doing its job right and i i remember there's a moment at the end where uh the the repo man is 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 entering into into the opera and luigi comes up and slashes him in the leg and it's like a terrible cgi blood effect but just before that the repo man comes out and he headbutts one of the like bodyguard women and she just falls over and i'm like because of that headbutt, the bad blood effect, it, it didn't phase me at all. I wasn't like, oh, I was like, do you see that headbutt? Like, all I was thinking so about cool. was the headbutt. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. This movie is very much that. Also, um, I, I, I will say I need to talk about Paris Hilton for one more moment because I think that yours. it's appropriate because she is weirdly very good in this movie. She's, She's like the very good. In weirdly, this movie. also the biggest star in this whole thing, I guess. Like, technically, I guess Paul's. I think in certain communities, yeah. there are other people who are more famous, but At I the think time, globally, yeah, the I think globally, she probably, it would be Paris. She had the most so, exposure in 2008 of anybody. In this movie. Well, I think even now, if you were to say anybody's name who was in this movie to like a regular person on the street, they would know Paris. First. They would know Paris Hilton, but they wouldn't know anybody. They would else. know Spy yeah. Kids, but I didn't know. The, but would they know Alexa name. Vega by know, her name, yeah, or would I, they be like, "Oh, Spy no. Kids girl"? See, I don't. I've never seen I've Spy never seen Kids. Them I don't know what the when fuss. you guys you guys mentioned it, and, and then I saw list. it later. <laughs> so In my good. head, it was. I know. I was thinking of Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Different, not as good. A different yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> which is very like, different. Spy I think Kids I have seen a good. Spy Kids. I think I've seen the third one. Alan Cumming is in it as a villain. I've seen the amazing. one with Elijah Wood in it, where he oh, appears. I think that's that's the, like the good the, son, Steve. The second or the third one. <laughs> I don't know. He's <laughs> they're in a video Spy game, and then, and then he shows up at the end, and Doesn't he's like, "Alan Cumming play like an Ice Man in one of them." I think you're thinking of Martin Short in the Santa Claus Three. I think I am, actually. Um, <laughs> damn, I got so off topic because <laughs> I love Alan Cumming. Sorry, oh, you were yes, talking about Paris, Paris Hilton. Hilton. Okay, so Paris does an amazing job in this movie. Um, I am, to this day, very bitter that she is not uh, credited as a producer for this movie. That, I think, is a mistake because she did so much to make this movie happen. She donated. It could have been she, her choice, though, maybe. 
I don't think it was. I don't think it was. I, think I don't. You never know if if she was doing Ooh. things like like donating her wardrobe and all that kind of stuff. It, yeah. it seems like she was she was more she like a, a she was more like a, an executive producer in the. But she in the should fact, have been at least credited. She should have been, but maybe she was just like, I don't want people to know that I'm doing this. I just I just want it to work. It, like, she seems shock, like that kind of person. She's just a good person. The, shock the thing is, as soon as in the movie it, it, would have been well, like a draw. But the th okay, but hold on. Let me just talk for a second. Yeah. The thing about it is that as soon as you get accredited on a film like that, as a producer, as an executive producer, a lot of the time that means that there has to be a, a certain percentage of the budget that goes towards you. And if she's putting money in and she's giving stuff to the production, like yeah, there true. there are ways for you to get around getting paid for things. But the easiest way to just not get paid for it is to not have yourself accredited at all and just be like, I'm not going to be put on the, the label of it because it doesn't really do much for me. So th no, that could fair. be it. But if that's not the case and I'm completely wrong, then yeah, she totally should have been. Because she should have been. Just like, I, I, I get what you're saying though. Like, I, I think it very much did come from her just genuinely believing in this project. And yeah, really which is cool. To do it. It, like um, every year that goes by, I learn like a new fact about Paris Hilton that I'm like, oh, she actually is like one of the coolest people who's ever existed so as cool. a famous person. During yeah. this era, as it turns out, everybody thought that she was this like idiot, like, son of a daughter of a like mobile, the little like bimbo blonde like, who's like ah, ditzy and that's hot and in whatever and it's like you're so cool in retrospect yeah. what we learn about her is she actually developed this character she was obviously a nepo baby so she was able to do this thing but none of everything she does was systematic everything she does was from an entrepreneur standpoint she developed this character it played into the early internet the sex tape was part of it. The because the, mm -hmm. there were no sex tapes besides like Pamela Anderson existed at the time. That I mean, course... but we shouldn't inflate it to the point that we're like, but that's amazing because she did do a lot of damage to like society with True. her shitty oh, persona sure. she created. But for sure, it think was of like all the of the teenage girls that you knew right? during but that now... time where you're like, ugh, these people are insufferable. <laughs> well, literally, because Kim Kardashian was just Paris Hilton's friend. And she did the sex tape route, and now the Kardashians yep. are one of the Our biggest thing, are an empire. global names in history, yep. right? So, but Paris Hilton did all kinds of like firsts for for you know becoming just being um, a nepo baby who's famous because they're rich, you know that 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 idea sort of started with her. She she and she did this dumb character to um, to just. I mean. Robert Kardashian was O.J. Simpson's attorney. Like, yeah, gross. You know. True. <laughs> I will also say, like, I think Paris Hilton just played, like, the full, like, brothel moment. Like, if you think about why the West worked, the only reason it worked was because of women who knew that they could get power from men doing what they needed to do. And they, they are the reason they had an economy. Like, they just said, okay, I'm going to do the stupid thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the stupid one. But I, really I think the dumb. fact that like Give she used, <laughs> yeah, she used the the power of like her fame that she had essentially created herself. Like she didn't need to become famous, right? She did no, it no. on her on her own terms, and then she used that ability, that power that she had created around her fame to to do things like this to to help finance a movie like this. And that's what yeah. I feel like is unfortunate about Nicole Richie. She yeah. got trapped in that whirlwind and she went through all kinds of drug stuff. And she's another Nepo baby who could have just like gone into singing or acting because Lionel Richie was her dad. But she got sucked up in, sucked up in this like typhoon of, of heiress stuff. And she was spit out by the machine. And that's sort of a detriment to, to the whole thing that Paris was playing into back then. But now when you see Paris talk about it, now she she doesn't even, she doesn't put the voice on anymore. No. She's just kind of she's, she's real. Like, she's like a comedian, if anything, or a, or a performance artist. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting. Yeah, she for comes Donald... out on stage and she says, "I remember." <laughs> I've been waiting for Donald Trump to reveal he was a performance artist this whole time, and it never comes. Oh, and he's gonna go. He might get a death sentence. So he's a normal <laughs> voice. He comes out and he's like, "Hey, everybody, this is how I actually sound." I don't talk. Like yeah, this. he's not like um, you know. Don't in the walls. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the walls. Anyway, sorry, what I wanted walls. to say <laughs> um, with Paris Hilton. Sorry, going back. Obviously, she's great and she did a lot for this movie. Um, Darren, uh, the director, did not want to cast her um, at all because he was like, no, it's going to be a publicity thing. People are going to be like, oh, you're just doing it for like the ratings or the shock or whatever. Uh, and Paris 
basically forced herself into that room and was like, no, you're going to see me. And she walked in in like a full costume, went into the sound booth and crushed so hard as Amber Sweet. And Darren was like, okay, well, you have given me the that choice. That was another you thing with Amber Paris Sweet. Hilton at Wait the time. Wait a minute. <laughs> she has a bit of a, what you would consider by today's standards, a failed pop um career but like the thing is i don't know she had some bobs true (laughs) that's the thing that's that's kind of my point is every single one of these like dis it's mostly disney like child actors that like go on to do other things outside of disney nowadays or there's like a they break the chains and go well they're either either they're like mccurdy and they their struggle their whole struggle Mm -hmm. or they're like (laughs) ariana grande who just became a pop princess um they Dean's all SpongeBob. have they all have degrees of pop career, and mm-hmm. Paris Hilton was one of those first people to be like, "Well, I'm famous, so naturally I can have a hit single." And you're right; she had a couple songs that probably charted, and I think she's been a DJ. You know, she's done. The when DJ. did she? Yeah. she when did she? She still chart? is, I think, a DJ. She really loves it, and she's good at it. Wow, it's crazy. Um, I don't but yeah, I think any that's also so perfect for her to play Amber. Like, who who else would play that? Like, your During dad is like a yeah. mega corporate monopoly dude who's terrifying. And with the Hilton, Hotel. yeah, exactly. The whole you know empire of that, and you are trying to make your own name for yourself. And also, your dad doesn't look at you and like care about you other than like make me money. Like, it's perfect. It was like made for her. And she still got to delve into the dark parts of it too, of being like, "This is messed up." And we should try and get her on the show. Up. I will try my best. I'll pull some strings. <laughs> you guys know her, anyone? This is like uh, when I was. We're doing... always seven degrees away, right? Yeah. So when I was doing Blossom Buddies, we always joked about getting Maya Bialik or Genevon Oy or Joey Lawrence on the show, but it's... people who would probably be way more attainable than actual. No, <laughs> we figured out we could probably get Michael Stoyanov, who played. Um, the druggy son who played uh fuck i can't remember his name now his name was the druggy son that's what the they called son. him in the credits in the credits yeah he's a drug dealer he's a drug boy he loves with, drugs boy he's a drug that, guy does in the, drug... the problem with the, that podcast <laughs> was that um Cass, have you ever heard of the television program blossom no okay there there it is fill me in you, that's the gap, Jason. You found it. You found, found it. the you found the age bracket it's that no longer cast. knows. It's but cast. People people who are thirty listen to podcasts. I barely remember it. You barely like, remember it. Yeah. yeah, and I'm only a couple years younger than Jason. Blossom was so. a sitcom in the mid '90s that was about a precocious young girl who some would call her annoying. She was pretty <laughs> annoying, and she had a friend that talked fast. And Joey Lawrence was like, "Whoa!" Oh wait, no, this actually is like. Yeah, you've had probably if you. Saw it, you I just know, like so. had a that's so Raven moment where I was like, yeah. wait, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> See, I was no, too worried to watch that's so Raven. <laughs> <laughs> that's so yeah. Raven is the other direction cut off. Yeah, yeah. I'm right in the middle. <laughs> just... Yeah, I liked Smart Guy. Remember Smart Guy? He's a smart show? guy. Yeah. He's a smart <laughs> guy. He doesn't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Drugs are bad. Okay, don't, don't do drugs. It. Addiction is a real thing it's in this movie, true. guys. It's yeah. very all bad. Addicted to a fucking. It's addicted to the knife. Addicted an, to the knife. It's an opioid, right? But it comes from your brain, so it's adenocrine, basically. But like, it's because people take the like purified version of it, and then you take it out of a corpse, and that's like the street version of it, right? I yeah. don't even think that's the case. I think it's always come from that. It's just one makes a big, massive corporation money oh, and the, the other, other one the doesn't free way to get it but it's okay. the exact same thing oh gross but yeah. why is it is it just a thing that develops in the brain because of the the way the world has crumbled so I, or from like, what i understand organ failure, which is the disease that yeah everybody gets? Organ from failure? what i understand <laughs> it's it's people who have died from this like specific disease it's almost like its own antidote once it's they pass the fucking umbrella That's virus what i it is the T virus. It's guy. the T virus. It's the T virus has because in Resident Evil Four, they're like they teeter on the edge of it being infected. And it makes them superheroes, basically. Yeah, it's like this town yeah. of people who are like halfway, halfway. So it's between. like a different strain. It's yeah. the G virus. It's the Alley G virus. It's the Z virus. <laughs> and you just like black out and see cool things and don't feel someone cutting into your skin and just being like boop boop boop. And it comes a in a little glass right. vial. A little, a, little a little glass vial. A little glass vial. 
Um, yeah, no, it's well, that uh, was a good Paris Hilton moment. I don't know if you guys have anything else to add about it, but I think we all agree that a Paris Hilton is uh, she did great, pretty cool. She's a pretty cool person who left a stain on society for a while based on like just young people emulating her, but then we all but, realized like, later stupid, that it was a big joke. But like actors pretending to be stupid or like blur that line have happened literally forever. Forever. Like, like James oh, Dean yeah, and there are people who emulate it. Like, now. Think Listen, about Polly Shore. You know? I'm not saying it was it was all like think about Andrew Tate and people yeah, yeah. emulating him. That's like way, he's clearly playing a character. Like Andrew Tate probably doesn't act that way when he's in a room with regular people. He's especially toxic though because he he weaponized incel culture to the point that women there's like women that yeah are like, I know I'm saying that that's you've the, seen that pearl the character that pearl oh woman. god yeah he's so it's, awful. Oof. What I'm trying bad. to sorry. What I was trying to say is that Paris Hilton is a harmless version of yes. what Andrew Tate is. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, uh, but I, it, in like almost like a state of irony, and like I think from what I understand of like being in that generation and like seeing Paris when I grew up, and I didn't like her for a really long time because I just thought I was like, oh, I don't get it. Why are you doing this? Um, yeah. It was almost like I think from a point of like irony. Yeah. And unfortunately, when that mask is very or like seems real enough, people can't actually see the fakeness in it. So they're like, oh, we should just yeah. do that because that's popular. It's like, no, 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 this is a joke. It's not good. Like, we should all be not yeah. doing this. And, and you know, nothing that Paris Hilton uh, did as her character of Paris Hilton was like all that destructive in ter if, as far as I can remember. I don't remember her saying anything cancelable, but that there's like people now that are even canceled for stuff that are like, oh yeah, you were actually like a piece of shit and you're just using your character to be able to say things that no one should really ever say. And yeah. you're just being like, no, it's a character. I'm like, okay, well, your character's a piece of shit. Cancel Get your character. Don't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. like the people just don't understand my sense of humor. It's like, yeah, because you keep saying racist shit. Like, yeah, what are you talking about? Doing you did that. Blackface once. Yeah. It's actually just not a joke. It's just not funny. Yeah. <laughs> Explain I, um, the punchline. Just as a sort What's of... the punchline that you did an Asian accent yeah. in a really offensive way? Yeah. Maybe you do that again. Yeah. So funny. The uh, okay. thing that I just want to, as a side note, I didn't realize that if you flip a Zoom meeting on Twitch, it just does show backwards. So, oh, everything's backwards right now. Everything was backwards, but now it's not. So everybody, go to, go talk to these guys on the Instagram and go right. to Instagram and look at us. Look at us go. <laughs> Look at us go over here. Yeah, you always want to have it mirrored. Um, well, I wanted it mirrored, but it was showing as literally mirrored on Twitch. Oh, oh I know, but if I'm looking in my webcam cam yeah, and I'm going yeah. the opposite direction, I'm, I will vomit. Like, I will. <laughs> it doesn't work for <laughs> Don't me. Don't do it. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I guess I have a question for you guys. Mm -hmm. Being first time viewers of this entire madness, well, I'm musical. technically not first, but the first time was like a dream. So it was like oh, remembering like a dream. Oh, like lucid dream, like yeah. acid trip that was forgotten forever was like, ago. Did Giles cut someone's guts out <laughs> in my dream like 10 um, years oh, ago? Oh, not Nigel. I called him is, Nigel like 30 times last It night. is Giles. I also called him Nigel. <laughs> Listen, all the same letters are in there, I think. It's Giles. Um, <laughs> Don't look it up. Is there anything in this that like... I guess like really stuck out to you guys is like moments you're like that was really cool or like i didn't get that or like it's interesting you... you ask that because after after my like um what went well what even better moment i wrote a few questions so let's let's do this as sort of like a a, a multi-part thing so your first Let's question. do this as though it was a little glass vial <laughs> a, a little, little glass, glass vial? vial a little glass vial if someone doesn't cast me in Shiloh as Shiloh after this, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> well, as long way. as I get to be the night surgeon. Yeah, dibs on <laughs> Oh my god, you would be so good. Yeah. We're a little bit too close in age. But I, I think remember. He's got to like really age up and I'll try to look Just, very yeah. young. It'll be fine. I could pull off Luigi, I think. I get very mad sometimes. It's very stabby. Um, so you're asking if anything stuck out. Yeah. What kind of made you go like, oh, what? <laughs> Well, I have a I, couple things. Do you know what I can't stop thinking about? It's mm. a fucking pile of when they open that thing and they go in. It's just bodies, and bodies yep. are like falling. Jack in. How about how he uses a corpse to bash it open? Like he also he's uses like a corpse battering, to bash ramming it open. a corpse into like a a seal <laughs> of some sort. He already got this hydrate out of it, so it's yeah, he, it's now. useless to him now. Yeah, he was that that was its purpose at that point. 
Also, I don't think, other than the fact that that was clearly styrofoam, uh, I don't think you could just ram a body into like a full no. like rock Stone. slab yeah. and be like, "This works." <laughs> this and is I fine. Yeah. That's like some like three dicer D and D stunt level. <laughs> if you roll a nat twenty yeah. on that fucking that yeah. fucking bash. Yeah. Then you do on it, his I guess. strength check. Yeah. I don't like. I he's clearly done that before, also, which is like kind of disturbing. If oh, he, yeah. If he knew that was gonna work with a, just a wrapped up body. I did also like that part too because it really sort of shows the disregard that the city has for its dead and uh, life. It but it also it's a product. It also sort of encapsulates the disparity between the poor and the rich, right? Because there's this endless ocean of of graveyard surrounding the the island mm -hmm. uh, where the city exists, and there are graves and gravestones, and people are buried properly. But then you smash open one stone slab, and there's just, just uh, piles and piles of of corpses everywhere. I think it very biggest... much gives me like Night City vibes, like yeah. being yeah. kind of like on this little island away from everything, and like going out to the slums and seeing a little bit of it, but like most of it has been drowned or like thrown away, mm -hmm. like just absolute trash. I think Doesn't the matter. biggest shock for me was even though I knew kind of the conceit of what happens in this movie. One of the biggest shocks is in the newspaper. It just in big bold letter, in not in the not newspaper, but in the animated part, the comic book part. It says, um, "Repoing body parts is legalized," or mm -hmm. or whatever. That's oh yeah, the fucked. the the Largos were the ones who basically sold. Sorry, back backstory for anybody listening, but they they sold this big product through this you know um, organ failure, and they were like, "We can save you." Then those people became in like they were in parliament they could deal whatever they needed to and they just passed laws to now now we can repossess you've done all of the steps that we needed you to do Oregon in order for us to continue to control you yeah and you good do, job guys throughout the movie yeah. they keep showing these like you know floating billboards like final fantasy style where they're just mm -hmm. these like sort of floating ships it is Double also sort of like Final Fantasy VII. The city sort of looks like that, Jason. I a know. little bit like Final Kinda. Fantasy XIII as well. We can get into it if yeah. you'd like. I don't really want to. I shouldn't have said that. Final <laughs> Fantasy XVI is very, it's it's medieval style, but it's very, like, it's all death. It's very, like, mm -hmm. R-rated uh, Final Fantasy. You, you see these billboards on the sides of, of, of these floating sort of, they're not blimps, really. They're just sort of, I don't know, like airships they're Futurism. floating around yeah and you, <laughs> and you just screens. you keep seeing vote yes with a picture of of largo <laughs> on there you know and you're like okay so this is they're continuously being voted in and you know that you i know, don't think i i feel like that's a putin moment well I don't obviously think they're being, they're, voted, they're being in. voted in yeah the, this isn't a that democracy. is just a full monopoly of it's people. like a it's like an offshoot of a monarchy almost, but it's like yeah. cor it's like it's like Skynet. It's falsified. It's like corporate. It's like the corpos have taken over the future. Well, yeah. I guess like also in this world, everything is fake. Yeah. Everything is fake. So yeah, like let's pretend to be society and pretend to do our thing. No, <laughs> it's all controlled. Are there other countries all... like assume we assume this is the United States? Are there other countries or like is Europe just like what the fuck are they doing over there? I from my understanding <laughs> at least of of this, I don't think that anywhere else really survived. Oh, like yeah, you really kind of see that. like this pan of like Zombie absolute style. like nothingness <laughs> and water and then just like bodies everywhere. It's almost like um, then you go to Hawaii like the ending of an apocalypse where it's like we yeah. just got happened to manage it in this little way and this is what we have left and if there is something else out there we can't communicate with it right. <laughs> or they don't want to communicate with us or, yeah that's what i was gonna say there could be like the other side of the world like australia or something is like solar punk like it's the complete opposite <laughs> where they're like that'd be cool they figured out the way to harness with the weather to like help them and like all robots a bunch of hippies are... being like let's yeah. All love each Even other. the robots are like, like yeah. smoking weed with them, being like, "All right, guys, let's go harvest those tomatoes." Yeah, I love yeah. that. That sounds like a much happier movie. All I yeah. know is harvesting organs. <laughs> and then one of them glitches and is like, "Yeah, I remember." <laughs> so oh, that's also such a good hook. I will say, you keep bringing it up, but it is it is a very good hook. Well, let's talk about so. I guess that was our segment of things that stuck out to us. Yeah. Well, I didn't really get to say mine. Well, oh, yeah. Do your thing, Stephen. Um, I think, for me, the character design of the of everybody was just fucking great. Like, 
It's like right out, out of a co- like. A I kept being like, crazy. whoa, whoa, whoa. Like the whole time I was like, I didn't know. Like when we, when you said we were going to do this movie or when you, when you asked about this movie and I was like, oh, Jason brought this up a couple of weeks ago. I remembered, I, I said to myself, I remember <laughs> the poster just stuck out of my brain immediately. I'm like, yeah, it's like a guy and it's red and yellow. And he's like, he's the majority of the poster. I remember the poster exactly. And I was like, it's but I feel aesthetic. like I don't think I've ever seen it. And then, you know, once we started watching it, I was like, I have seen this at some point. Um, but the Repo Man costume is really, really good. It, it's something that I would love to add to the grimoire in terms of like the illustrations that I've been doing. So good. Also him just like hosing it down in his hose yeah, down yeah. station after being covered yeah. in blood and like ripping someone's But he also has like, a, like a to this, me. oof. But he also has this like look of uh, like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, it's like, yeah. I, you know, like when a <laughs> this dog- This is a lot. Like, this is you know, like a, a lot this time. Oh my yeah, God. When you see those yeah. like videos of like somebody coming home from work and- there's garbage shredded everywhere in their house. And then you go into a room and it's a dog. That's like, Ooh, it's that. like they can't it even look that. at you. Like it, it reminded it's like me of that. It's like they've almost like gone into a different mode and then they're like caught in the act. But Nathan is just caught in the act by himself. But they know that they've done something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> very wrong. Um, So, th- I mean, it is very, you know, like the inspiration for the costume is clear, but you know, there's a reason that <laughs> that costume is threatening and posing and some would argue cool. I'll be right back. Uh, because okay, bye. there was a, a certain political par- par- party that uh, militarized themselves and, and designed all their costumes to be extremely threatening. Yeah. Happened, happened at some point in the 1930s. You also see like, the, like yeah. the Gene Co. Yeah, on it, the armband. It's very reminiscent yeah. of Nazi culture, which is very like, much. you know, I don't. I don't want to say it's cool, but it's like you know, it's threatening and it's scary, and that's as it why should it's, be, because yeah, we're telling exactly. a story about someone who is scary and is threatening and is also has been kind of brainwashed in a way. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, yeah, I, I, get I would that. also say that, like it, it reminds me of there's like this this David Mitchell. He's a he's a British comedian. He used to have a, a sketch comedy show oh, i know that guy is so funny yeah and he made this uh the sketch with his partner at the time whose name is escaping me at the moment but uh they're both nazis and they're like on the front lines of combat but they're like the generals and they're wearing like the ss uniforms yeah and they're having a, a conversation about the war and then all of a sudden one of them's like have you ever noticed that uh we have skulls and crossbones on our hats <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like and he's like what and he's like we have skulls and crossbones on our hats and everyone's like, yeah, so? And he's like, well, don't you think that maybe indicates that we're the bad guys? He's like, no, no. no it's just no, like, it's it's like just, fashion. It's just, You're yeah, like, no, I think cool. that's really bad. I think we're doing yeah. a bad thing. I think we might be the bad guys. And like, they they have this like existential crisis about being the villains of World War II. So good. Very, very BBC. Yeah. Like, which is, it, but it's also very, very true that they did yeah. just have skulls and crossbones on yeah. their military. Uh, also, uniform. that's some old school Hugo Boss. Yeah, the OG Nazi uniform, Hugo Boss. So um, it's funny. Crazy. So I, I was listening to all that because I had my head set on. But right yeah. after we watched the movie, after you left cast, we watched like twenty minutes of uh, Mystery Men, and I've yeah. been thinking about how like Mystery Men universe becomes the Rebo yeah. universe because it's also wacky. It's like the mask fits. The mask movie fits into this sort of aesthetic. Like as a pre, like a way prequel, and then like we were talking about Joel Schumacher Batman, and uh, uh, it all seems like it could exist in the same realm for sure. Yeah, yeah, um, it's very '90s. Like the, I think that the the aesthetic <clears throat> of this movie has a very '90s vibe to it. Oh, very much so. Well, like, the again, lighting like, that's and why stuff I, is I connected to it too. Like I was a young kid who grew up in like the mid '90s grew up in like kind of like I wanted to be a goth I just wasn't allowed but in internally I was a little goth emo punk kid um right. so like I had a goth very, phase as well of course like as we all phase. did in that time or I guess a fair amount of us did um but yeah it, it really like harkened back to why I loved that kind of sub- subculture to begin with like it just brings you right back in for sure in, like a comforting weighted blanket um i think the other thing yeah i I would just say the costume design overall is pretty fantastic um the 
what's his name? The the mask wearing son. He Javi. Javi. Javi's faces are crazy. I, his faces, but also just the fact we already mentioned it, but the fact that he carries a, a little vanity mirror around with him at all times, like a Beauty and the Beast style mirror. It's not even like a clutch or something, you know. He's and he and like his acting is very much like mirror acting, where he's like shocked, and then every once in a while he'll be like, "Oh, dramatic!" Like, I love his myself. mirror. You're like, this is funny. Um, That's a funny I, thing. Can I tell you guys a fun fact? Mm -hmm. I love fun. Facts. I feel like you need to make this a, a new soundbite for whenever <laughs> I'm on. It's a fun like, fact. Hey, fun fact. <laughs> um, the very first time that you see Pavi in this movie, he is wearing his first face. Yeah. Um, it is a mold of Darren Lynn Bowsman's girlfriend at the time. Oh, she did a, a full like face mold, and that is the first time we see. See, Poppy. I love that kind of stuff. It's like it's so cool. It's I'm like, like why? That's so rad. It's the difference between just like making like a soulless thing and then like somebody like Dan Harmon will make community and just every things are happening in the background and every all these intricate things that sh don't need to connect connect, you know, in in movie making, I feel like there's very soulless movies that are just like this is the thing that's happening on the screen. But then there's movies. But there's like... always behind the scenes. There's always what's actually making it a thing, and they bleed. If they're good, they bleed together because you well, care I wanna know, about it. I want to yeah. know little tidbits and facts like this, and I think indie film lends list. itself. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Me. I think indie film lends itself to this sort of thing. But sometimes you watch a, an indie film, and it's like, okay, you just you had an agenda. You just wanted to say your thing. You just wanted to say your message and make art. It doesn't yeah. really, it doesn't really, like, there's no ripple to it. But then something like this, like, took a, it, it was an uphill battle to get made. You somehow mm -hmm. get Paris Hilton to get behind it. Um, the producer on the Saw franchise gets behind it. You get, like, you get these, like, you get these, like, legit actors to be in it, legit opera singers to be in it. It's, they cared. It, it's coming off the back of it, it being a very successful, like, off-Broadway play. I'm surprised. Has has it ever traveled? Has it ever come to Toronto? Do you know? Uh, it has not. I would know because I would be the first person to be auditioning. So, um, I would also, if anybody is in Toronto, if anybody wants to put on Rebo, you let me know immediately. Because the um, reason the reason I ask that is because now Hannibal the Musical, there's a touring yeah. group that's doing it, and that's just. Jason, it's pronounced Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton, Hamilton the Musical. <laughs> the Hannibal the Musical, of course, is the Trey Parker and Matt Stone, their first yes. real project. And it's a really They're weird... They're crazy. I love them. It's a really weird musical that, like, has a... It, it's the, really similar to, like, this in a lot of ways. Just, oh, just off the rails. Insanity. Just an off the rails thing that they managed to get made because the guy from Troma... What's the Troma dude's name? Do you remember what his name is? Uh, his name's Jonathan Troma. No, it's the fucking John the Smith. Troma guy. Here, I'll look up Troma. Let's see. Okay, Lloyd Kaufman. Lloyd Kaufman saw these tr these boys. They saw hit their. Um, I'm pretty sure that this predates even um, Jesus versus Santa Claus. They just made this thing, and Lloyd Kaufman saw it and was like, yes. "You know what? Let's put that under the Troma banner." So right. at least instead of like four people seeing it, at least 17 people saw it. Yeah. <laughs> That's more that than I'll sense. see this episode. Yeah. I will say it's like true. this. So <laughs> no, with not. Repo, not. like we'll get this like 60 movie views total. has <laughs> become similar in a way to the way that Rocky Horror is done. There are a lot of shadow casts where like they play the movie in the background and you have actors in front of it. Yeah. Um, oh, I've never heard but of But I don't. Oh yeah! Oh, oh my God! You've never seen Rocky Horror with a shadow cast? No. You'll like it's playing it later, on the I'm screen, sure. and then yep. there's people acting yes. it out, and, and then you also have the, the audience entire audience is, is like doing calling all out all of their little like memes, their little like throwing digs at characters. Yeah, Absolutely. let's make a throwing toast, rice. and everybody throws toast, throws toast at the screen. Yeah, yeah. where's it's the, crazy? Where's the room shadow cast? Because that's the only way you're going to get me into theater to see the room. <laughs> the room. <laughs> Honestly, I, I do know there is a place in Toronto that does uh, Rocky Horror every year around Halloween time. And I want to get tickets this year to see it. And it, it is just shadow cast beautifulness. As a fan, as a, as a massive That sounds fan, like a, hey, did you see this one road trip? It really does. Or a, a I field love trip. That. Yeah. And as a I'm massive down. fan of professional wrestling, that kind of feels like 
in the same realm. Yeah, as you pro get to wrestling. be part of the vibe. Also, I, I this is a little bit of a side topic, but you guys know that Evil Dead is a musical, right? I've seen it. Okay, there's a thank there's God. a splash zone. There is this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not cool. I it, just didn't want to have to drop that on you guys. And Mark, be like, Martin, this is a cult musicals are a thing. <laughs> one of our, uh, our friends, Mark, was in. He played Bruce Mark Campbell. Mark Nosen. Yeah. I love Mark. He played yeah. Ash? Yeah, we grew up in London to get, together. Wow. What? You know Mark? Yeah, I know Mark. I know Mark. Yeah. Mark we have a mutual, friend, mutual friend, already? friend already? friends. It's oh, crazy. Shit, yeah. <laughs> We've never talked about this. I didn't but Mark know. is lovely. Yeah. Do you guys want um, your own show on the Hey Did You See This One Network where you talk well, about We'll get Mark. Yeah. Mark's both of our friends. You probably Oh my do God. This. I haven't seen him in like a, over probably a decade. He's lovely though. That's crazy. crazy. What is yeah. this world? I don't know. We're all connected. Everything's connected. I remember. So, so oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to ask if you guys had a favorite song. I was literally about to ask the same question. <laughs> Whoa. One of you guys should have just went instead of giving each other the floor like that. I'm very Canadian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you go first. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You go first. But well, how about way, I go first? But in the it's the one where he goes, yeah. I <laughs> remember. <laughs> which is like five good different dissonance. songs. He does that a bunch of times. Um, yes. Very specifically in Night Surgeon. My yeah. favorite song in the whole shit is uh, Chase the Morning because oh, chase morning so because good. the hologram part is we talked about this last night it feels like very much a hook from a 90s like uh trance uh dance music song but also the song is weird and haunting and it's a very pivotal moment in the story it's the it's one of the big reveals of the movie yeah. um it and definitely I, does I listened feel like one of those like uh La da da dee da da da. Yeah. La da da dee la da 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 da. We just that was three different songs. Beat my lover, gonna beat my lover. Beat my lover, she is homeless. Um, and also chase the morning is the song that made me go what the most. And then today I listened to that song the most because I listened to the cast recording like. Pretty much all afternoon. My cousin hates Seventeen. Seventeen is also is like my second favorite song because it reminds me, it, it twofold reminds me of like Rebellion and being se- literally being Seventeen. But also it's like a pretty good boppy like pop punk song. It gives me kind of like Avril Lavigne vibes. Yeah, she's and dressed I, like Avril Lavigne suddenly, and that's another like, standout moment in the movie for me because, apropos of nothing. See, Imagine they got Adam Levine to play her in a version of this. No, Avril Levine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Just, they have Joan Adam Jett Levine. and Adam Levine <laughs> in the yeah. background. And of then 17. Joan Jett is part of that segment. So crazy! Like, How did they get her? I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. Do like, you, you want to play the guitar in this movie? And she was like, "Yeah, I want to play the guitar in this movie." And, and then, it's like the most simple lick of all time. Dun 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 dun. Yeah. dun, dun, dun <laughs> over and over. She's yeah. like, "Yeah, I got this. I'm a professional." <laughs> I can do that. So good. For no uh, reason. I think at that point I said repo the Joan Jettick uh, opera or something. What did the I say? Joan Jusical? No. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> the Joan Jettick. You said the it's Joan. It's a jukebox opera. <laughs> the Joan Jettick. Uh, That's what I said. Yeah. Op, op Joan. The, the Joan Jettick opera, yeah. I wrote it down, uh, but I haven't gone to that part of my notes yet. That's all right. <laughs> I couldn't even remember what I said. I said I said a lot of random stuff last night. I don't remember. I say a lot of things. Some of them mm-hmm. are true. Most of them are lies. Some of them are I remember. But I think my favorite one is probably the Zytrate goes in a little glass vial. But it like, is very good. Very that's catchy. just because it's super catchy, and I like when people say things and then someone repeats them right Call afterwards because it's yeah. yeah, it's a good it's, call and answer. Yeah. yeah. Because it and feels in, like you're part of something. <laughs> in that same song, what and I you like, can predict what's going to happen next in the song, so you're singing along and you don't even know it. What yeah. I like in that song, though, is that the first one is like um, Zydra comes in a little glass vial, a little glass vial, a little glass vial, and then they do it again a couple stanzas later. Yeah. And the, uh, the it, he doesn't say it backward for the third time. The crowd says it. It's just the chorus, but the chorus says it in like a. Yeah, we just fucking said we the know. Thing. Yeah, and I really because that's that's the joke in my head that they do this really catchy thing, but it's like she. I think that's why the meme is so prevalent. It's because it's such a dumb, 
such a dumb so there's a good moment in it where he, and he says and that's what gets you ready for the surgery and then he says surgery. it to him he says it to himself like exactly. no one else says it, and he's like surgery, surgery. like he's like I'm, now i'm going to prefer the surgery yeah surgery. uh i also like i liked sort of the implications of that whole sequence visually because she is addicted to the knife addicted to the what addicted, addicted to, the to the knife, knife. and um there she has these or i can't tell if it's him or her that's having these visions of them like having sex while oh, he's performing a surgery on her that which is, like, whole uh intense. scene is uh amazing because it's actually part of what was filmed for uh come up and try my new parts which okay, was not okay. included in the movie not included on the soundtrack uh paris actually sounds amazing on that track because what i um, ass- but it it does kind of uh mesh the world between the kind of uh, I don't know, like hinted at they are together, together and that's, well, like, yeah, that's doing say, this whole yeah. drug deal and it's like very sexual. One of- uh, that song itself is like solidifying that and a lot of the shots from that video are included in right. Zydrate right. Anatomy when she's like having flashbacks of like them being like super okay. intimate. So like one of, the, one of the main issues that I have with musicals in general is that like metaphor and allegory uh they they don't necessarily always work uh because people are singing about what they're feeling and thinking constantly so so, you're, so metaphor and allegory are, are sort of like they can still exist i'm not saying that they're impossible but a lot yeah. of the time you're being told exactly what people are thinking because they're expelling their emotions through song yeah. right so it's the only you, way they can express themselves in that moment is like i've tried everything else and now i only can sing it like it's right. that's the mentality of a musical theater person so like the, i've tried everything else yeah the, the metaphor comes uh in these these visual moments right so that to, mm-hmm. to me that's like she is addicted to the knife but she's addicted to surgery, but he's the one performing the surgery. So when he's performing surgery to her, he's technically like making love to her. Cause that's like what she feels when she's having yeah. the surgery. Right. And also like, I will say like gives like very kind of grooming vibes as well of like, Oh God, a, that whole sequence like, is it's, that. It's yeah. weird. Like it's uncomfortable, right? Like you have yeah. this person who has power over someone who is sheltered who is a Nepo baby, who doesn't know the outside world, who only needs to like do all these things to like feel anything. But then he's also doing And then it you have front... someone being like, come here, baby, I got you. Also, yeah. you want these drugs? Also like, <laughs> you're gonna then... look great after this. You're like, yeah. this is really messed up. Like Freaky. this is bad. I don't love this. But he's also doing it in front of a, like uh, a 17 year old who's just yeah. stumbled into the street for the, the first time. And then you also have this other person who looks like, what's her name from Arrested Development? Like the, you know, like the girlfriend of uh, uh, oh my God, yeah, George yeah. Michael. <laughs> yeah. Anne? Anne. Anne. Anne, yeah, she looks like Anne. And the color and she comes out and she's like, I got my first taste of Zydrate at 13. And then I, I started turning yeah, tricks I, yeah. like a month later or something. And you're like, Ugh. and then she goes up and like hugs the grave robber. And you're like, oh, God, the it's grave robber is the gross. grossest character out of everybody. And everyone's He's gross. gross. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a bad uh, world out there. Yeah. That, the whole that whole sequence and song though it is the catchiest is also like the most disturbing like everything that they're singing about is just actually opening up the the vile nature of whatever the, the fuck this city is called Ugh, the the little glass vial the little that glass exists glass inside vial. the vile nature of this horrifying city and i i also feel like this whole movie is just like exposition almost until like the final act <laughs> like it yeah. just is mm-hmm. giving you feeding you information it, all of the songs have so many lyrics. If you actually look at it from a musical perspective, um, it's not great, but it is very catchy and catchy, it has a lot yeah. of things that it wants to say. And I love that. And just on that point this. about the acts, like the it's like a, it's two, it's three acts of like the standard makeup of a story, but it's two acts because it's all of this. And then, and then literally this. he's like, he, he, I think he's and doing then it's the, the opera. I think he's doing the newspaper trope even yes. where he's like, well, well, yeah. stay tuned. He literally is like, stay tuned. That was my other, uh, my other great joke that I made last time where I'm like, oh my God, this guy's such a boomer. He's getting all his news from the newspaper. <laughs> the newspaper. And it's like 20, <laughs> 2044, 2544. This guy doesn't have an iPad. Yeah. What is happening? Uh, he's, I mean, yeah. he's a great robber. I don't know. 
Um, but I <laughs> like true. the fact that it's like, an old newspaper as well. He found it in a coffin. Found it in it's a from like a, yeah. 50 years ago. He's actually in the future. Yeah. This he was is trying to dig up a corpse, but he accidentally me. dug up a time capsule. <laughs> Whoopsie. Yeah. Um, no, I, I like the fact that because they have to, uh, they are trying to explain so many things in this movie very quickly. I like the fact that we get to see the grungy level of the outside world through Shiloh's eyes, which is why we have that call and answer, right? Of he's like, this is life. She's like, what are you talking about? I have been in a dollhouse my whole life and I just got outside and I think I'm going to pass out right now because I don't think I'm allowed to be here and I can't breathe. And he's also, like, I yeah, this my is blue gross. Rocks today. And she's like, what? <laughs> and I only have one wig and it's getting really itchy. I need no, to she have has my the blue wig. one and she <laughs> never wears it. No, she only I'm has one upset. with her. She has. True. She doesn't have a backpack full of wigs. Remember she at should. the beginning of the movie, Steve, before it was revealed that she was bald, you were like, you thought the special effects were so bad that she adjusted her She's wig. Because she like adjusted her wig, her wig at one point. Movie. I'm like, she just adjusted her wig. <laughs> like, oh we my didn't God. see that. You think we're dumb? And you're like, oh, wait, no, she's bald. Oh, okay, she's got no got hair. Look. Why does yeah. she have eyebrows? Yeah. It's a blood disease. It's I don't a know blood disease. Yeah. Don't you know also, that, like, blood diseases don't affect your eyebrows? <laughs> I will confirm that, you know, how we were talking last night about, like, they Nathan gives her her little, little like, pills in her water. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I think those are those old school, like, 2000s mints that were just little pills. Yeah. Uh, that's confirmed. They were or, mints. Oh, was it? Were. Yeah, I it thought was maybe, the exact Because, like, thing. the way it gives off bubbles, I thought maybe it was just, like, crushed up, like, uh, uh, like anti-acids or something. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's those little minty. Wow, you I call that? I loved those. I lived I loved in this time. Yeah, you're like I Orgies. am. I loved orbits. the Repo Man. I'm the Night Surgeon. <laughs> I loved Fruit by the Foot. So good. Ring pops, Tamagotchis. Wow, wow, Tamagotchis. I will wow. say though, I think like one of my absolute favorites. I have a lot of favorites in the soundtrack. Um, Night that, Surgeon is definitely up there. Song is yeah. Um, I want to talk about Carmaggio, but it's not my favorite. But God, that song is amazing. Uh, I think in order for me, it is Night Surgeon, We Started This Opera Shit, um, Legal Assassin, and... So you like all of the songs the same? <laughs> all of the songs are your favorite it's, song. <laughs> well, no, like there's, I think there's like 58 tracks there's in this a lot, entire, yeah. it's a lot of music. Um but I specifically wanted to talk about We Started This Opera Shit because that song is such a bop. If you listen to that solo from the rest of everything, it is chaos. It has such a driving beat to it. And it isn't trying to tell you too much. It is just there to be a spectacle. And when you're faced with a show that is just pounded and pounded by lyrics and lyrics and lyrics and poetry and trying to get something across it's like a breath of fresh air to be like oh we're in for a show now like get up have yeah. fun tell your story about your genetics that's so cool it's I, it's very rad is that the i one did the also like moaning in it yeah they had all the gen turns yeah. and they were like gen, gen turns. turns they were like ooh, <laughs> yeah. spicy uh, that yeah. one's called lawn moaners <laughs> <laughs> i think i, love I also that song though it's good <laughs> No, it is. It is good. I also like the one where Blind uh, Mag is is uh, singing just before she dies. It's like in her, uh, it's like Italian Splinters. or something or Latin. Um, can I tell you guys what the lyrics are for that? Yeah, actually, you were gonna. Uh, you, this was your homework. You were gonna tell us about yes. a bird trying to escape its cage. I think is what you sort of alluded to. Yes. So um, obviously, Sarah Brightman is a trained opera singer and is amazing. And I love that they gave her a full moment. I wish there was a way that it was a bit more easily translated to the audience. So we could have picked up, oh, sorry, that's my cat's tail. Uh, mm -hmm. We could have picked up on uh, the message she was trying to say, but it's basically the same kind of chorus that repeats. So this is the whole thing. I will try to be quick with it. Uh, the story is um, a long time ago, a fatal bird named Cromaja met the arrow of an archer while flying along the lava coast for years, thinking it was being chased. It escaped the arrow. Kramaja, Kramaja, why don't you face danger? The arrow was attached to its wing and it 
flew, trying to shake it off. Pulling the arrow, others get wounded because of me, because of me. And then she says, come take my eyes in English. I would rather be blind. And it's this whole thing of like, she has been this, this spokesperson, this sponsor for so long because she has no choice but to be that. And watching everybody around her just fall into the same trap that she did. I think the main thing with Meg that makes me really, really uh connect with her and connect her to Shiloh is when she first sees her in this like kind of carnival camp when Shiloh gets away and she has this moment and looks her dead in the eyes not knowing that she was a person did not think she survived the entire ordeal with Marty dying and Roddy the entire time is being like oh she was a beautiful singer and I helped her I could help you too and she just has this like you can see almost like her gears turning of a backlog of being like please don't please don't do this. Don't listen to this man, but I can't say anything. And the only way she can say it is being like, I hope someone hears this. Here's yeah. my eyeballs. And then rips and her own eyes out of her rips head her own and eyes then looks at the audience. Head. And then yeah. she says, I got my eye on you. And she flicks them in the audience and everybody screams. <laughs> That's and then she does the thing that I have been asking you to happen the entire movie. Because in these sorts of and movies... And the, the fence. Yeah, in these sorts of movies, there's very gothic fences everywhere. Every Adams family has it. Every There's a very great scene in uh, the American Horror Story about the... I think it's called Coven. There's a witch's coven. I love fall, the Coven the season. Coven. I like the first Coven season. The, the end of the world season, I, I had kind of fallen off. American oh no i watched story. only the og i think yeah but, i do um, think though like at least falling on a fence like that is at least two times before horror. they showed them i'm like somebody's gonna fall on that fence guys like somebody's gonna scene, fall on that literally fence. the scene before you're and i think jason joke. said like because she was singing and there was one of those fences on the opera stage jason was like is she gonna fall on that fence <laughs> <laughs> the entire time i was did. literally just like biting my lip being like don't say anything. Yeah. Let them experience this. This is amazing. You're like, You'll don't they have say it, anything. anything. <laughs> You'll learn this about me, Kaz, is I fucking hate spoilers in like an almost like, I don't want to use any inappropriate words, but in, in almost the OCD kind of a way. It's a weird idiosyncrasy that I have about spoilers. And this hits you different. We opened, we opened up the floor for you to spoil so many things for us last night because we kept me and Steve are like also the kind of people that are like calling. Me and my wife do it too. Like we're calling shots during the movie. Like we're making predictions. I remember me and Jason went to go see the new Avatar, and I leaned over it to him at like the very beginning of the movie, and I was like, "One of these two fucking kids is dead for sure." <laughs> yeah, You're yeah. like, oh, blah. <laughs> and it's so good." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even though I'm constantly like making predictions, I also don't want the spoilers to happen. So thank for you, sure. thank you for. But not also, there's like a certain denying... thing to recognizing storytelling, right? Yes. So like, Cass, yeah. well, I turned to you last night and I was like, I think I've figured, I think I've figured out what's going on. Oh, and I mean... like the first 15 minutes, you <laughs> called like the mega <laughs> twist at the end, and I was like, I don't know, I don't think that's it. I you were like, you were like pulling my my wig off and being like this is you're wrong <laughs> it's like okay because i was like because he was singing about what have i done what am i doing i'm like he's yeah. singing about he's doing he's something wrong so he's he's yeah he's cl he's clearly doing something bad so it's like okay and then he and then it goes to the the comic book explanation of what he did wrong but that doesn't explain what he's doing now so you know if you just look at like storytelling in general and, and it's, it is a very much like a I don't want to call it paint by numbers, but it's like but a, it's, it is. A, it's a simple story that you've heard a million times before. Just painted and, in a very cool, rad way. Yeah. Light. And so like logically to me, I'm like, how are they going to make the father and the daughter hate each other? It's going to be some sort of twist where he's doing something to keep her here against her own will. And the only thing that he's doing is giving her medicine and telling her that she's sick. So I'm like, okay, so he's going to be, he's, he's keeping her sick so that she thinks she needs to stay here and then right after that you were like wow i think like that's the bad thing about him and then he's like evil layer yeah but also <laughs> i, I rip people's man. guts You're like, out oh yeah. maybe that's the bad thing the as soon as he went up to the fireplace and put his hands on it and it kind of vibrated a little bit like it yeah. moved slightly and i was like is that a is that gonna be a door? <laughs> it was I a door. remember. I remember that I put a secret laboratory behind my fire. We are coming up against it a little bit. I'm gonna yeah. since it's our first, it's our, our maiden voyage with me and Steve as the, the hosts, and our, we're in our we're in our special guest era, 
And yes. since this is such a special movie to you, Cass, I do want to. We can, we, you know, I'm going to give some liberties. I'm going to. We're going to. We're going to go a little long, probably. Well, um, okay. I do. Jason, is, here. Jason, we're going to call you the Statue of Liberties for I'm the rest the of the night. Statue <laughs> of limitations. <laughs> I uh, do, but did, Jason, didn't you say you had questions for us as well? I, I we kind of went through them just organically, but I do have okay, a question good. about that. We we talked a little bit about what would it look like? Is it necessary to remake this? What would it look like as a remake? I think it'd be sick. Would it be a if movie? Had a super high budget. That'd be as cool. we've been talking about it, a television so, show. For for me, would be cool as me. like the. I don't know if they need that, but you're like a six part miniseries. That tells it, the, all of the story. But then would, would it be a all, music for the whole time? I would love to have more of the story for sure. I wish it was longer. I wish they didn't have to kind of make the cuts that they had to and kind of fill people in as quickly as they could to make it a movie. I would like it to be longer. But I don't know if I would want it to be higher budget. I think I would like it to be clean. Mm -hmm. But I think... Part of what makes this movie so good, it's also very similar to Rocky Horror Picture Show, is that it is kind of crazy that you use this set in weird ways and we dive into the world with you. It's like, it gives me like uh, Doctor Who vibes when they had like Daleks that were just like made out of cardboard and well, you the, still yeah. believed it. The pacing um, of the whole thing, it's very, like I've seen a lot. Oh, of, it's a lot. I've seen a lot of musicals now. <laughs> okay. I've gone, because I've moved to Toronto. I didn't have this as a kid. We had Neptune Theater and you got to see like the fucking, you got to see like Scrooge. Oh, the Neptune. I know yeah. the Neptune. You got to see like Scrooge and the night before Christmas and mm -hmm. mostly Christmas plays apparently. Yeah. But we do one play a year. This white Christmas. Old Scrooge course. only opens the theater once this a year. On Christmas <laughs> Eve. Less a movie and more a stage production in movie form. But then you have like Hamilton on Disney, which is just the stage production. I would love to see this as an actual, like, full, like, live done show. I, like, too, if right? I could get like a, like a really crazy high budget stage version yeah. that is filmed in like that kind of one shot Hamilton where you get like you get Meg and you see like this crazy like laser show behind her and like really cool screens behind that playing Marnie's image. That's so the cool. Hamilton fucking moving disc in the middle. Yeah. With all and like their, use like, the stage. It's up. made for that. But then you I have think in you, order to make it a high budget movie, you would have to simplify it. You would have to edit and make it make more of a linear sense. I think like which a, is also cool, but I think like different. a Sweeney Todd or like for better or for worse for like a Cats would oh, cats. would Cats sucks, but it is a good I way. To, it sucked, <laughs> but it was a good way to do a musical in movie form. This the cats, Sweeney actually this and Cats it. actually share a lot of like similarities Bullshit. in no, their sorry. sorry but i know <laughs> cats is terrible cats like it's, it's cats is a stage the play. dancing though dancer is amazing good cats, performers the cast that they always have for cats is good i saw i'll never guess that but the show is bad i saw cats like the live cats and it's equally puzzling like it's equal andrew oh, it Lord weber is on was on doing his cocaine years or something. He just wanted to fuck. He a nailed cat, it guys. with like Jesus Christ Superstar and Evita and Phantom, and he Which did a lot of good stuff. Shit. And then he also had a bunch of people dressed up in um, <laughs> race cars on rollerblades. Yeah. In that oh, one so he also and, wanted like, to fuck they, a car. They like broke legs and stuff, trying to like God. rip around the stage while singing at high velocity. But then on top so of that, lot. on top we we threw around like Sam Raimi, which would be a good person to do this as like a movie, uh, or like Tim Burton to do this as like a movie. But you, Sam Raimi could crush this. But you do have to sort of realize that there are kind of two kinds of musicals, even. There's like the mm -hmm. kind of musical where they sing everything that they're saying in sort of a stanza, but sometimes not. And then we break into a full number. But then there's yeah. also the musicals where it's like, hello, we are talking to each other as normal people. And then suddenly we break into a song. Um, yeah. So like, I think you have to like keep this as the one where they're singing the whole time. So I guess. Yeah. Oh, it has show to be. It's, I mean, it's an work. opera, right? Like it's, it's the whole thing is supposed to be that it is sung 
from beginning to end, which is what an yeah. opera is. There I is think no there's break, only like there is five, no dialogue. There's like five parts in the whole movie where they're not singing something, and it's usually like the tapering at the end of a of a scene where like where they say something. Where Giles will be walking away and he's like, I can't do this job anymore. And he like walks away and then what's they his name is like Nobody no walks, walks away, away from, from me. me. <laughs> but like imagine he was like me. <laughs> you, know, you kind of want that i didn't realize that was like the definition good? so an opera an opera typically is where it they sing every true. single thing and yes. a musical can be an opera but also can be like grease where there's scenes where they're just talking to each other which is why like, if you hey, look did at you Jesus get any fucking smoochies last night well yeah let me tell you about <laughs> it did you line sexually really assault creepy, that girl or what trust me <laughs> so i spent 45 minutes combing my hair and then Scooby Dooby, Squibbity Doo. <laughs> exactly that. Uh, no, uh, if you look at like uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, that is a rock opera. Yeah. The entire yeah. thing is sung from I beginning to end. I saw Rock of Ages. I saw the Rock oh, of Ages. Oh, I love. Yeah. Wait, did you watch the movie? I haven't seen the movie. I've only Don't seen Don't do the, it. Like, lower... Only see it live. It was a low budget like Rock of Ages 2 where it was like up and coming people doing it at a I smaller theater in Toronto. And it was I very... watched. Um, it on Broadway, and it was when you I saw went, Rock of Ages on Broadway. I did. Holy it was shit. the one time I've ever been to New York, and it was the original cast, and it was the one show that I almost watched twice in the week that I was there. It wow. was so good. It was so good, and the very. The version camp. I saw wasn't so good, but the narrator character—that's who fucking Lanny Robert or Lonnie. Yeah, Lonnie. That's, that's a very Lonnie like Jack Black of, kind yeah. of energy character that's all you need to drive the entire thing honestly we knew lonnie lonnie was a friend of my wife cool. madison's friend from like what like i was at his wedding and stuff like it like Rad. i knew this person and it was crazy to see like that's another whole layer when you know somebody in a in a like, musical stage play yeah yeah brad the very production cool, was cool. it had some issues <laughs> yeah that's fair but cool You know what oh, sucks? Should I talk now? Well, you know what you sucks? should talk, Stephen. <laughs> I saw I'm so sorry. I've been talking this year. so much. It's just this is my uh, baby and I can't stop. No, so. I just don't have anything to add because I haven't seen any of those shows you guys were talking about. Because hmm. um, you, Steve, you Ooh, have Listen to the thing. soundtrack. The original Broadway soundtrack is also like just a bop to put on in the background. For Rock of Ages? Crush it. Yeah. Okay. It's very good. It's mm. good, but it's all like, it's all the songs from the 80s that you know. It's yeah. all like, don't stop believing over and over. Um, Domo like Origato, Mr. Roboto. <laughs> they need no? to incorporate a sticks Domo Origato, Mr. Roboto into it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had, like, I've been kind of going through my notes. Um, cool. Here are the other questions I had. Favorite tracks, favorite performance. Yes. Do you have oh, a favorite God. performance? 100%. Ooh. The night surgeon. Yeah, the best. I think I think Anthony Stewart had really, really knocked this out of the park. I think without him being Nathan, being Repo, I I don't know if it would have worked. Honestly, like I think they really casted him else. perfectly. I mean, I already liked him before oh, yeah. watching this. Like, there are times where sometimes I'll wake up and I'll I'll stretch. And then I'll look at my ceiling for a minute and then I'll say, previously on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> I'll do that sometimes. Uh, I don't know why, because I think I, I am living in a Buffy episode all the time, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, Maybe. I think that his performance, I didn't know. I knew that he was a good singer because of that episode of Buffy, but I didn't know how good of a singer he was and that oh, he, he has such control over his Because it's voice. also like a sexy voice, too. It's not just like a... It's not just like a good singing voice. It's like a. I'll be back in a moment. It's an erotic sort of. Right. It has like an, an erotic uh, quality to it, right? Well, like it's. This it's is hot. also, I will say, like as someone who has many friends of mine who are not musical theater people, yeah. I will show them things like this because I, when I watch musical theater, I don't need someone to sound perfect. I don't need right. them to sound like a beautiful little angel, a little bird, a little whatever. Like, I think Anthony Stewart's, Stewart Head's voice in this is so perfect because he's not afraid to crack. He's not afraid to be like, 
graveled and like in this kind yeah, of like growl sometimes it's and it's, it's so brilliant good. it's yeah. a character choice and i'm like i would much rather listen to this than someone trying to sing this like straight in a musical version it's very much actor first and it, he just happens to have an incredible voice to accompany it yeah that point kind of reminds me of the the tim burton sweeney todd where yeah you know, the, the the performances are good but they're not great and there are times where you're kind of like was johnny depp the best choice for this like i don't think that he was a bad singer but i don't think that he was the best well he also <laughs> wasn't a singer before that that's true and <laughs> that's why i'm like, like was he the best choice like but i also <laughs> liked like i love sweeney and sweeney is usually done as like like a very like beautiful robust voice yeah. Um, like, I mean, Josh Groban is playing him right now, uh, on Broadway, which I would love to see, uh, very oh, I've badly. seen little clips of that on, t on TikTok. It's very whatever. good. It's very, it looks very, very good. Um, but I kind of like the fact that if you're going to make it a film and not a stage production, mm -hmm. get someone who can act it first. Yeah. I would but... rather you not hit the note and commit than hit the note. And I don't believe you. But I would also anything. say, get somebody who can do what tim burton did which is that every single one of the sets in that movie feels like it's a stage play set but yeah. in a in a way that you like can navigate it and believe that it's three-dimensional and that yeah. it's it's a real space but it is like it's larger than it still life, feels right? like a dollhouse right like when you yeah. look at sets on a stage it's like all of these things are cut in half so we can see inside of it. Exactly. And I and think then, that was yeah. one thing that was lacking in this movie for me was the set design. It wasn't yeah. perfect. There were some good it's sets, but it wasn't it wasn't uniform across the board, right? Like Which I just think Which is crazy because that... it was all done on one lot. Like everything was Yeah, done but in, it's like, like they probably tiny... they're probably like put a lot of money into that alley. Well, and yeah. you, you and know you CGI... can make an alley. Yeah, and you can also pump an alley full of smoke and there you go. <laughs> it you looks way better. Know, you guys want to know something about me? I okay. fucking don't even recognize any CGI in this movie. I like maybe what? like touch ups and stuff, but like not like the overwhelming. What about that little like, bug at the zoom beginning? zoom in of like all <laughs> yeah, of that bug. For the whole city, city. Yeah. <laughs> like that. But like, like yeah, like big, it was actually pretty well done though. Big like it... swaths of like of like of like Earth and like the city, sure. But like in actual scenes, it was a lot of just like really practical moments. There was no like. I think, there was no gore that was um, not practical. No. Right? Well, I mean, we uh, I, the, actually, I think the only one is like the uh, stab from Luigi's knife at the very end, where he the eye blood was fake. That's the, the eye blood are, was fake. Yeah, that's true. But those are those are like a programmed. Those are called digital squibs, and those are like a thing that are like you just get okay but your point is that there was no cg and there's tons no the, my <laughs> so point was that, to say that there's no cg it's that it didn't stick out to me like like the fifth element for instance but that's because you're entertained film. by it right well, yeah it's the theater of the mind right like yeah. when, once you're in the zone and you realize kind of a little bit what I guess you're in what, for you're just like okay throw anything at me what I'm i should say pencil. is there was no cgi in this movie that like fucking took me out of it i will once Got again it. bring up the fifth element which is a fantastic movie. I love that movie. But I saw it for the first time, literally in last year, and I couldn't get over the like. Not a great time to watch it when you're, no. you know, when you are surrounded by Marvel movies yeah. for like a decade. That On have a four K fucking giant TV, also like, yeah. So it wasn't. You know, what would have been a great time for you to watch that movie in nineteen ninety nine <laughs> or whatever, nineteen ninety eight, whenever it came out. Yeah. <laughs> when I get a time machine, I'll go back. Thank you tell my younger self to be um, like, but also there there <laughs> there wasn't a moment in this movie where somebody shakes their head and they're an alien and then it turns into a human head like there's nothing like that in this movie no. right like it's that's like, why the cgi wasn't overwhelming because there was no overwhelming cgi where you're confronted with a person who's interacting with a full cgi character it's right? still very based in reality it's like the ultimate absurdism based in that could happen tomorrow. It's like almost like a Black Mirror episode. I, but I think the point, yeah, <laughs> like the point that, that me and Cass were kind of making about the difference between something like Tim Burton directing Sweeney Todd and this movie, where obviously they have vastly different budgets with whole different powerhouses behind them in, in terms to get them made, is that Tim Burton can sit there and wait until the perfect set that he wants to be made for a specific scene can be made perfectly 
Whereas this is like they've got a budget; they have to make a bedroom like for a little girl. Thousand or something that might be a lie. But I, I like left like the room for a second, but when I left, we were kind of still talking about who would be best to direct. I think the, I think Tim Burton over Sam Raimi, just because I'd rather see like a Sweeney Todd vers- version. Like where he edits it and actually like makes yeah, it like a like a make, makes it into a, like the Les Misérables movie versus the stage play also is a similar thing. Oh man, imagine those Sam Raimi snap zooms. Like, no, I agree. I, the Sam <laughs> Raimi is so good. The Sam Raimi like he intriguing. slits a guy's throat and it's like a guy turns is like screaming at the but camera. That's like, way ah! that plays way more amazing. to keeping it really as good. a stage. Can they just like show. co-direct? They would not co-direct. Oh, well. man. That would be I a mean, crazy they have, co-direct. They have one thing that connects them in a way that I don't think a lot of people think about very often is that uh, Boingo Boingo himself is like, does the music Danny for Elfman, all their yeah. movies. Yeah. He's and there also, like, also Spider-Man um, or sorry, uh, Dr. Strange um, multiverse of madness. How does that connect them? I can't remember where I was, why Tim Burton relates to that. I think you have the best one. <laughs> yeah, cool. Danny Elfman. Nice. Yeah, we got this. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Also, I uh, I just googled it. I googled it. I'm a liar. Uh, the budget for this was 8.5 million. 90 percent of that was up front by uh, Darren Lynn Bowsman, and the they made this for eight million dollars. Was a hundred thousand eight eighty eight whatever oh. this number is. It probably it got bad. suppressed. It was yeah, not good. I doubt that um, it it went it went around into as many theaters as it it should have, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was supposed to be originally like just to DVD release, which is how I found it. But I didn't know they actually did do like little film festival things. Tried to. Get I think to 2010 it. is like right around when DVD sales started to really dip, you know, and it was yeah. like, this is dying. Okay, I think. Um... I think we gotta we gotta do the do you got any more notes moment. Let me just check my notes. I will say I have an excellent use of this. Theories. It's the other theory corner theme that Steve wanted to hear. Uh, I had a Very little. Good. I had a little dumb, like theory while we were watching the movie. It's literally just that none of this shit's happening. And it's all happening from the micro doses of the. <clears throat> yeah, I assume this is part of a, a theory within a theory. It, it's the Zydrate. He, she's he's feeding her like little micro doses of Zydrate. She's yeah. tripping balls and imagining all this in kind of an Alice in Wonderland kind of a way. Very Alice in Wonderland esque. <clears throat> that's all. That was that's a small theory. <laughs> well, no, I think you're right in a way in that theory. Like it is kind of like Shiloh is the Alice and Grave Robber is the Cheshire Cat. The Cheshire Cat, yeah. Guide, guiding her through, right? It, it is this whole story parallels so many, which is why so many people can relate or understand it or call things before they happen. Because it's a bunch of stories just kind of mixed together into this crazy world of gore and violence and gore and so. violence and magic and fantasy and, and cyberpunk <laughs> so he's with... a night surgeon get your blades out get your guts out gotta get you night surgeon i love the night. belly for Tato <laughs> version so that's so good but uh yeah if you playlist. do you have any additional notes did you guys use up all your notes dj granny was a good moment Steven, what do you think um, I mean, I, I did want to talk about the, the transitional comic book stuff. I thought it was really cool. And I, I, I knew kinda... you would like that. Well, I was it, like, it's cool. It's, it's similar cool. to your art style, even like your, it is uh, a grimoire, little bit similar to my art gr- style. Grimoire pictures. And you're, when you're working on that, uh, that game that we don't really talk about anymore because of, it's kind, it's kind of like that. I mean, cool. we can still talk about it. Like, okay. I, I'm still proud of all my work there. It was very good work. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I I do think it is similar to my art style. You're correct. Um, I liked it because it gave us a little respite from the musical. So uh, another reason that I have an issue with with musicals, especially musicals where people sing the entire time, is that music expels energy from me it, it it drains energy from me so when people are singing and there's music constantly i am like being constantly 
sapped like i'm like yeah. a vampire is just like sucking my blood out where i'm like i need someone to just calm down and have a, a peaceful conversation for a second <laughs> there's too much TV. music so yeah. you're not the kind of person who like is you, like do you when you're walking around the world do you, i need headphones yeah i have headphones, headphones all, the time. all the time you do okay but sometimes it's a podcast sometimes oh, okay. it's music sometimes it's nothing and i just I need... don't want people to fucking look at me no i need uh, music pretty much 24 7 i need music yeah. playing uh i i generally will have music playing but i almost you know equally i will have a podcast a podcast happening in my head where where it's people just like this kind of shit where it's just people talking about movies or something um and yeah i i can't so i don't again i don't hate musicals it's not i don't think that's accurate to say i do think that they are a little bit more difficult for me because as i was saying before you know like nuance is uh interesting to me and a lot of the time nuance doesn't exist in musicals because people are like hanging off a fucking lamp post screaming at you about how they're feeling and i'm like yeah okay we get it (laughs) i was thinking thinking of the rain too yeah um but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad and you know people love it and i do love it sometimes but i can't do it all the time you know that's fair and i did enjoy this movie but i uh I did. I you guys remember like as as the movie ended, we kind of like sat and had a conversation for a minute, and then I was like, "Oh gosh, like, <laughs> I need to, I need a cookie or I need to, uh, <laughs> some orange slices." You guys want some pizza. Also, yeah. too, like with this movie specifically, like it very much doesn't let you breathe. Like there are shows that give you a second. Uh, this is not one of them. Like you are on for the ride. It's like a roller coaster that just doesn't stop until mm-hmm. it's done. There's not a lot between songs, too, I noticed. Like, listening to the soundtrack through today, I feel like I would, like, watch the movie again, almost. Yeah. But, I, like, I, the the point I was trying to make is that I, I did like those comic book moments in between. And oh, I, cool. I did also like that they they didn't necessarily feel the need to have every single thing told to you through... Um, the same lens as the rest of the movie. We got we got a moment to, and it, it felt very much like it was breaking up chapters or or segments. Yeah. It's like okay, this is we're now in we're going into a new sort of chunk of the story because we have this interesting sort of visual thing to to deal with. And I, I don't think it's perfect. I I kind of I wish they took a little bit more time with those images because I one hundred percent I can look at like even the image in the background right now. There's a blood splatter effect there that I am very familiar with in a software that I use. Oh, for that sure. I'm like, that I'm like, oh, I know that exact blood splatter, which it means that they budget. just splattered the blood <laughs> and they didn't even take time to like add extra drips and stuff to like try and make it not look like just the brush, which I'm like, that's lazy. But the actual lazy. line work, if you like look at like the card behind that, like that's really cool of, of like course. the kind of shadows. And I'm like, of course. you were so close. Were but so they close. also could have added like, you know, like those the comic book sort of like uh, the inking style, like you know, like the dots or the lines or something. Like they could have added like a filter on there to. Yeah. I don't. It's just a little bit boring, but it's it's. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying to as a person who literally it's my job to to illustrate stuff. I'm like they could have made this a little bit more interesting. It's a little flat. It could have been slightly better, but I yeah. still like it. I still like it a lot. This is just like harsh criticism. I think. No, I love that. I mean, this movie is not perfect, but it doesn't mean I don't love it with all my heart. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's fine. And there's a heart being ripped out right there. And I'm not right trying to there. do that to you guys or the movie. I'm saying, like, I like the illustrations a lot, but they could have been better. They also, could have been better. It has a barcode on it, which we didn't really mention, but there's yes. a part where he rips the spine yeah. out of a man and he checks the barcode. And it's almost like, oh, I fuck, I got, the wrong, I got the wrong spine is the vibe I got from that moment. <laughs> But does, did, is that true? Did he have the wrong spine? Or no, it... I don't think yeah. he did. I okay. think he was like his watch was going off where his like daughter had to take her medicine or something. And, yeah. was like, uh. and they're both lying to each other on the other line, being like, I like yeah, that I'll come too. home. I just, yeah. uh, that's... Where are you right that, now? That, that oh, is the actually glass the... is broken. The glass yeah. is broken. Yeah. You can hear the people outside. Well, I got to come home and fix the window. It's like, the don't... window broke? Hold on. <laughs> the, that, that was actually the one moment where I was curious to see how they would accomplish that on the stage. And I assume yeah. they would have some sort of set where it's like two different sets like next to each other or something where he's like, or they would just be on either sides of the stage. Oh, very much that. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think um, the one thing that I love about this movie, there are many things, but <laughs> the, the characters are very cool in themselves. The only thing that I wish could happen is that I got to delve into them more because clearly there's a lot. Obviously, like, the tropes are there for sure. But, like, the moments that we get with Nathan and Shiloh, you get... Um, a lot of things happening very quickly that all makes sense to my brain of like kind of a overprotective father and like a kid who is trying to rebel and wants to see the outside world, sure. But they also throw in like that moment of like him carving out someone's spine and her sneaking away. And that is such a beautiful moment of that I wish could have been explored a little bit more of like them being able to yeah, they're both Lie doing to something. Each other more. Yeah. Like, be like, no, yeah. we we're both doing something bad that we should not be doing, but we have to to keep face to make and, sure everything's and, perfect know, and okay. And, and at fine. different points in your life as a human being, the the level of which you gauge something being bad is completely different, right? Oh, like, for sure. Sneaking out when you're that age is just as bad as ripping somebody's spine out. <laughs> at, it's the at same the thing. It feels it's like it. the, it's the same thing. Same it feels thing. the same. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, with that... I wasn't even being facetious. I know that sounded facetious. No, but no, I, no not wondering. at all. I if his job is saying. repoing organs, then yeah, he's going to feel the same level of that. He's been traumatized into it. Like, he's yeah. been, like, yeah, like a little bit brainwashed. I guess if the worst thing you've ever done is sneak out versus the worst thing you ever did was is use, a man, your wife? use a man as a puppet... I think using a man yeah, as a puppet right, is worse oh God, than I clandestine, <laughs> clandestine <laughs> killing your wife. Um... All right. Do you guys want to go to, into some final thoughts territory? Do you have any other um, notes, Cass, looking at you? Let me see. Um, I mean, I have a lot. But I just, I don't know. I think I, I've i loved this movie for so long that I could probably write an essay about it. And I don't have time You just did a that. verbal essay about it. Pretty I've much. written essays about bit, professional wrestling. But like, it could be like, so, it could yeah. be a lot longer. I get yeah. that. But I won't I won't do that to you guys. Um Do you wanna start us I'll tell see. you what, do you wanna start us off with your final thoughts slash like anything else that you want to talk about? Okay. Um that's a good Because you are the guest and the guests. Question. So I guess we didn't actually really talk about like the finale of this. Um I just want to touch on this really quickly, okay. obviously. Yeah, for sure. Uh Nathan at the end in this very dramatic moment is killed by uh, Roddy Largo, who sucks, and um, we have this whole closure moment between Shiloh and Nathan. Uh, in the original, Nathan didn't die. Um, so that's oh. a cool, fun twist. Uh, he survives. That I thought he was going to survive because of that moment where she's like, you're going to survive! <laughs> yeah, no, like, you'll yeah. get out. Like, I believe in you. Um, honestly, that scene was very well acted between both of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believed them even though it was like a crazy outside world when they were in it together i believed that they cared about each other and i love that um final thoughts uh this movie (laughs) is a lot it is a lot it is non-stop craziness it does not always make sense and it does not need to um because the themes in it are so strong and call back to stories that we know as people already you will have people who will watch this not thinking they will like it relating to something in it uh whether it is like a me as like a shiloh like 15 year old who is like i overprotected and like all these moments and i just want to see the world or you're like an older person who's like god i just i i need to protect the people around me because this world is bad or like you or you see like other relatives or people you've passed in your life that are just garbage and trying to monopolize in the world there's everything in here for somebody um it's just taking an open mind to see it and to have fun and not take it seriously it just because it's musical theater doesn't mean you have to sit down in your chair and shut up and be quiet this is (laughs) not that kind of musical be loud make comments try to figure out as you go which is very rocky horror as well like it's it's inviting the audience in to be part of it rather than like little school children who are just like i'm being proper and watching joseph and the technicolor dream code for the 50th time but i also I like that musical it's good yeah i don't know it's good i think people should watch it um it's a good time 
my final thoughts. What, Bit rambly, but what went well and, huh. e- and even better? What could have been a little bit better for you? There, honestly, I think what went well for them was their marketing. First of all, uh, the way that they really, um, like. <laughs> I don't know, like targeted no, audiences. Sorry. I, I that, was like, laughing the... at like the, I remembered the song at the end. I, I thought, remember. What, no, not that. I was thinking about the like. Sometimes I love you so much. Oh, did not I love you so much, yeah. but I do. So good. Sometimes I'd stay up all night, wishing to God that I was the one who died. Steven, you and me, baby, let's do it. We're doing this musical now. Oh, right, well, just um, just let me be Luigi, please. You can be I want to do the. I want to. No, you can. You can be Waluigi. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cassie. So good. Wow. No, it's totally fine. Um, what? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, they they did marketing very very well. They sold it to the culty fans. They knew exactly who they were marketing to, and they found their audience very well. Um, I think that as someone who loves camp so much. They crushed it on the camp level. They just went full throttle, commit to the bit the entire way through. And I love that. Um, What I think they could have done better is definitely within the narration itself. Um, There are a lot, again, a lot of ideas that are kind of being shoved into music or a scene that moves so quickly that you can't keep up. Um, It's, it just needs an editor. That's it. Just edit it down, make it clear, and you're good to go. Um, but keep the camp. That's so. Yeah, that's really concise. If you were going to uh, give it like a rating, have you have you ever come up with either a literal rating, like go to ten or to five or stars, or do you, or a jokey rating? Do you have any sort of? How I would, would you give it. Um, but I'm biased, though. I would give it a five out of five vials of zydrate <laughs> a little glass vial and maybe i'm addicted now yeah I'm addicted Just to surgery get that right in there perfect that's uh that's a really good like e- whoa the studio audience just showed up apparently oh um, they're here finally <laughs> um I've been trying not to. There's been a lot going on this this week's episode. I try not to overuse the uh, the sounds, you know. <laughs> Wait a second! Wow. Okay. Well, that was a blood fart, by the way. <laughs> Someone was trying to take my large intestine. There's a movie uh, on Prime. There's like some like... gases in there. He's like pulling it out. You're like, oh. well, there's like a shot in the movie where it goes down like a board of organs that you can get, and the last what? one on the list is large intestine. And like, I think I yelled while we were watching it. Hey, can I get like two feet of large <laughs> intestine, please? <laughs> Make that into a sausage. Yeah. Um, there's a movie on Prime called like Terror at Blood Fart Lake or something. It's some like shitty horror movie. And my like my mom was staying with us on the weekend, and she kept being like, "Could you imagine what a blood fart would be like?" And I was like, "Mom, this is I had ter- one this morning. <laughs> terrifying on so many levels. It's yeah. um, a very interesting question to be asked by your mother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like Love that. It, it, I, the the context is sort of that she would, she also looked at you been... in a weird way that implied that so, maybe she has had yeah. one before. <laughs> you imagine? Isn't that crazy? Isn't it so crazy if you could have? Something... She's like relate to me, relate to me, relate to me. We're <laughs> we're the same, right? You've had this. No, okay, uh, I'm not weird. I'm just. Ooh, yeah. it's a question. And I took it more like, like sometimes <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> Sometimes I love you so much. I took it more like she had never been confronted with that concept before. Hopefully. Maybe not. I don't know. She's 60. She's probably yeah. farted a lot of blood. Um, at any rate, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward to that in my future. Oh, my God. Thank you. Steve, why don't you hit us with your uh, your final thoughts? What went well even better in your rating for this, for this musical uh, repo? Uh, um, the, the genetic opera. My final thoughts on this movie are that it is perfectly up my, I was going to say alley, and then I was like, <laughs> asshole? <laughs> it's perfectly up my asshole. I remember. I remember. <laughs> uh, it is something that, uh, it, it, it's perfect for 
my interests in every way to to make me uh, sit down and, and want to watch a musical, which I, I often don't want to do. And, you know, that, that's nothing against musicals, nothing against people that like musicals. I just have a really tough time getting into them. But this is how you do it for someone like me. Uh I love horror I movies. I've done it to people before. I love like, gore. I'll sneak you into yeah. musicals. I'll make you love them. And I do love music. <laughs> like music is great. It's one oh, of no, my most sure, favorite but, like, things musicals in the are world. Hard. Yeah. You need you need the fun, silly spookies. Yes. Um, and you know, a couple of the other the the other movies we're going to be doing this month are movies that I really enjoy that have a lot of music in them and would be considered musicals. So you know, it, it's not impossible to find a musical that I like, and. I gotta say, I, I did enjoy this quite a bit. I don't know how much I would have enjoyed it if I had to watch it by myself, but the fact that we got to watch it together uh, with our other friend Brian, that was great. And I loved, Cass, that you gave us sort of the the open reins to be like, all right, guys, I just want you to know that before we start watching this, you can rip on it as much as you want. If you hate <laughs> it, just like tell me well. it's great. And I was like, okay, here we go. And I started my lawnmower up. Absolutely. And I started riding it, it around be... the living room and I was like, I remember. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Like, that's exactly how Rocky Horror got a, its start as well. Like, it's yeah. stupid and crazy and zany. So but it also fun. It got me more engaged. It's not serious. Yeah, where I felt like I was allowed to yell at the movie without you, like, making you feel bad, which is good. That's, yeah. a, that's a great thing. Because I, I also know what it's like when you're trying to show somebody a movie that you hold close to your heart in a near and dear way and they just talk over it or they're not paying attention to a part that you're super into and what are you going to say Jason the complete owl and oh, also God. basketball okay. and also <laughs> dirty watch work watch those together because you refuse to watch movies with your friends because well, you hate your friends yeah, maybe I we should all, all watch friends. movies together all the time <laughs> I don't know but we're all Let's... speaking into a mic now yeah, yeah. we're all <laughs> microphone folks micro folks I can't get that close to mine because I have Microphones. a guard um <laughs> So it's so that I don't eat my microphone. Um, but I did, I did enjoy it quite a bit, and I I liked the costume design. I didn't care for the set design entirely, but I did care for some of it. The music is great, not entirely. It's like everything. There's like stuff that I really like, and then stuff that I'm like I could leave at the door, and I'll probably forget about. But yeah. there are moments in this movie that I'm going to remember for a very long time, Yay. and not necessarily just the ones that I've already seen on. Tiktok telling me that Zydrate comes in a little glass vial. A little, a little glass, glass vial? vial? A little glass vial. And it goes into the end of the gun <laughs> like a battery. Oh, uh, you know, I thought it was battering ram, but I was like, it, he doesn't say ram the very Zydrate clearly. gun goes somewhere against your anatomy. anatomy? Your anatomy? Um, yeah, no, it it's like a battery because it goes in like a battery. Yeah, it, it goes into <laughs> the gun like a battery. Like yeah. a battering ram. <laughs> It goes into the gun like a battering ram, like a I don't battering know. ram, like a battering does. ram. That was metaphor. Uh, <laughs> metaphor. Okay, barely knew her. Nope. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think that some performances are amazing. Some of them are amazing in certain areas, but they lack in other spots. And I, I think it's a movie that is just like rife with greatness and problems. And I, and I do think that you know we talked about it a little bit. If this movie got like a two hundred million dollar budget and they had some <laughs> psychopath come in to make it, it would be crazy. Just go to town. If It'd James be crazy. Cameron fucking made this, James movie. Cameron gets really into musicals all of a sudden. And he's like, I want to do Repo. The but it's underwater. Opera. It's at the bottom of the. It's sea. Titanic yeah. that is yeah. currently on yeah. Broadway. That is amazing. Yeah. Titanic, yeah, Titanic. starring Rose, <laughs> Rose and Jacques. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean. When it comes down to like a, a review, you know, the story is, you know, it's a Disney story. It's basically like any other musical you've ever seen. But that's, again, not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It, it, it makes it easier to follow because you're having to follow through people rhyming and shit, which is hard. A lot. And a lot of lyrics very quickly. I and sometimes people are rhyming, smart. but they don't even sound like they're rhyming, but they are. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> smart like, Hold on. person, but when they're singing the, the exposition, I become an idiot is the problem. I become dumb because it's like what I, what I said at the beginning of the show. Because like you're, you're dancing, your brain you're turns dancing. off, and you're dancing. I'm trans. That. You're like translating, even though they're speaking English for the most. It's part. like they're speaking another language. Yeah. Yes. Well, I will say also as like a, just a side note for people who are not musical theater people like me, um, if you watch any good 
uh, musical, and actually most musicals will do this. If you listen to the music alone without the lyrics, that will tell you the story in itself. The lyrics yeah. are just there to kind of like bump it up and give you more context. But like, if you just listen to Repo, like zero, zero lyrics, absolutely nothing, you're gonna get a vibe off of that I because the music in itself yeah. is a language and it tells you something. I think that about halfway through, I started paying attention to the themes and how they were sort of like intermingling. And I was like, oh, I'm appreciating this more that I'm realizing that like uh, Repo Man and his daughter and uh, all the children, they all have their own sort of like vibe to them. And then when they start to overlap, I was like, OK, this is this is this is actual art. It's not just nonsense, noise and blood. Um, I think for my what went well, uh, the the bangers the the songs that like really got me got me and uh again that that repo design the costume it's like a weird like world war ii era surgeon outfit sort of yeah, science fictiony it's spooky well, like, it's and also kind of a hazmat suit it is yeah. it's, it's like it's like several scary things wrapped together and it 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 does the job of being intimidating very in imposing. a very good way and even though like giles himself is not an intimidating figure when he takes the helmet off and he has that sort of like unhinged jaw thing that he's doing i'm like That's okay so yeah this guy is he's spooking me and he's like i'm scared for everybody except his daughter it's kind of a norman I, I... bates thing a little bit like yeah. unsuspecting serial killer vibe yeah and i also like that they they give you that right away. You don't have to wait. It's not like a big reveal. Cause like I was, st I was unraveling the plot being like, wait a minute, what's this guy doing about his daughter down here? Is he <laughs> poisoning her? And then all of a sudden he's like, I'm the night sir. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh, this wow. guy's also killing people in his basement. Yeah. yeah. He's um, making a puppet out of people. Yeah. Um, so that's my, what went well, what could have been better. I do think if there was a consistency, cause like yeah. there are, there are things that they clearly focused on in this and there's stuff that they had to let go in order to get the project done. Cause they didn't have a huge budget. They didn't have a lot of resources. And uh, if they were able to have that consistency throughout, I think it would have been amazing. Um, when it comes down to a rating, I would have to say, I didn't know I loved you so much. I didn't know I loved you so much. I didn't know I, I loved you so, so much. But, but I, I do. do. <laughs> there we go. I'm not a great singer, but that's my review. You are a great singer. You are a good singer. You're all good singers. We're all good singers. Let's start a trope. A, a troop trope. A troop. band. It's happening tonight. Oh, we can all... Do karaoke, I think. I'm honestly down. Yeah. Anytime. Karaoke, like the world is healing. I, you know, karaoke. but I didn't know that I'd love it so much. I did not know that I'd love it so much. You I didn't, didn't know, know I'd love it so much. But you did. But I do. Yeah. Wow. But I do. Um, <laughs> Stunning. So we, I did forget to to play a thing for final thoughts. I'll do it right now. It's time for our final thoughts. Excellent little little callback to the early nineties. Um, <laughs> like a full thunderstorm outside my window. There is. Uh, I've been watching a thunderstorm during this whole podcast, so it's been like I've been. Oh, oh I just got one too. Yeah. I got the light. You, did you guys yeah. see that flash? I, the same I actually flag. also saw that flash. Did we all get the same flash? But we're in very different areas. I mean, you're. At, we're not really. We're all about. In oh, like I just a, heard the noise. All about. Yeah. Yeah, eh? um, th so it's my turn. Um, it's an enjoyable <laughs> and weird musical. I don't think I had any moments where I thought this sucks, despite it being, despite its low budget aesthetic. And I think I wrote that down because Cass, you came into this very much like I know you guys are probably gonna hate this. Don't be, rip it apart if you will, but that's not what happened. You I think dare. That this movie has, has is going to stay with me for. A long time i think i've been thinking about it ever since we watched it i know it was you know it was 24 hours ago but <clears throat> i actually think uh that works in its favor the low budget aesthetic i i want to see this as a stage show and i think that will enhance this experience quite a bit more watching it with friends is a must as it boosted it almost a complete letter grade or number grade for me um 
I think where it suffers is like the movie version. Um, what I mean by that, of course, is I think as seeing it in theater or seeing it on stage would be infinitely better than this particular version that we watched. I think that's the case for any it's true. musical, really. It's true. I do even think, like I do think Hamilton, like the Disney version of Hamilton, is awesome because the original cast is all It's pronounced cannibal, Jason. Hamilton. Hannibal. Oh <laughs> Campbellton. Um It can be kind of hard to understand what's happening at times because the dialogue is in music stanzas. So it isn't one hundred percent straightforward what they're talking about. Um, I recognize this could be remedied by several viewings. The songs are great. I like that a lot of the soundtrack reminds me of other songs from the era, metal and industrial. That's something we didn't talk about. We kept busting into, like, we'd hear, like, a little, like, musical sting from, like, Living Dead Girl or, or Dear to the Ditches and Burn to as Dragula or, like, Queen. We did that, that a little bit so last much. night, yeah, like, yeah. over and over again. We are just like... Um, I'll be listening to songs from um, this going forward. It's a thing that I do when I go see a theater, like in theater musical. I, I'm trapped listening to the soundtrack to it for yeah. a week. So Jason's going to be like, he's going to write his Instagram score for the movie. And then on the way to work tomorrow, it's going to be like, didn't I want to love you so much? And he's like slowly going up by 0.5. I'm the monster. <laughs> assassin. I'm the nerd but precision. <laughs> yeah. So I remember. remember. <laughs> the major standout in this film was to me, was Paris Hilton's performance. I think we talked oh, I think when we were talking about that a little bit when we when we went over that. But I just wanted to reiterate that. Uh she absolutely kills it and may I say she's kind of a good actor for this sort of thing. For this like yeah. this like grind housey kind of horror thing. Like she I believed her campiness. Like yes. I every moment yeah. that she was on stage, I knew that I was watching something that was elevated and like not real, but it was at the same time. I believed her. The whole the whole way through yeah everything matched there wasn't any like performances that felt out of place really like even uh godfather or sorry goodfellas guy like he was <laughs> he was right there with his pirates of the caribbean is he, haircut is and he shit. mara sorvino's dad i don't know hmm. i maybe maybe hey google is i also will say um i didn't talk about him much and i i should have more but oh i love bill mosley He's i so love good. him so much He's so good. he crushes at giving us like the perfect comedic content in this yeah. absolute I think trash that fire the brother chaos. the brother song was pretty good too where they're mark it like, up where they're it's like good. yeah where they're just sort of circling each other and like throwing hurting each other, at each other and throwing brains at each other and like stabbing, stabbing people, people in the room and like just like a woman dying the whole time but they don't even care very camp he yeah. he really did such a good job i think he yeah absolute standout performance it's, it's just goofy but like I could see that on on stage being extremely hilarious. Like, oh yeah, where in in movie form, I don't know if it worked at, translated as well, but like, I could see that on stage being super funny. Like, yeah. like people like rolling out of their seats, being like, "What did yeah, you just dude, say?" Just, this guy, and he's what? like, "He just murdered that woman, and she's not even dead yet. She's dying." <laughs> yeah. He keeps just stabbing wild, uh, yeah. stabbing wildly. I love live theater and will absolutely go see this should they ever revive it. And that's when I give this a three out of five. Yeah. But the caveat is that it's a four out of five with friends. And I said that to you guys right after we finished. Also, it's a solid four out of four if you have friends. I highly re recommend it either way. I give yeah. this movie, removing all the guts from a finance dodger, repossessing the liver for myself, and using the person like a puppet. And putting it into a shaker for a new drink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What went well? Music and weird story. Even better. It needs an update. Like I just I yeah. just want to see this like we we went through the last 7 years or so of just like so many reboots and remakes and this was such a cultural phenomenon at the time that I, I don't know how this hasn't just been 
like somebody just gets the license because it's such an interesting thing. It does seem like something like that, really. Like it. But also, like, would you want to remake Rocky Horror? I wouldn't. That's a good point. But they have like multiple times. Of like, course, but done it's it. very much an homage, not like trying yeah. to do a retelling or like a re. But maybe that's the key, right? Is is you do an homage, you don't do a, a remake, right? It's. It, it seems like something that could do with a facelift, had... so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> like, Rocky Horror was, like isn't like a. Like, Rocky Horror is a different beast because it's like a 70s movie, you know? Like oh, for sure. And Rocky yeah. Horror is a brilliant piece of art. It's crazy. Yeah. This, I just think that this could, ben- could benefit from... And I don't mean year... Like, I don't mean, like, it's 2008 and then in 2018 we have, like, a shitty remake of this. I think, you know what would be cool? I just think this of, movie a takes place in 2056. In 2056, I hope someone does a remake of Repo the Genetic Opera. I hope so by that point. I mean, we're I not think that's be just alive right on the lore brand. It's yeah, gonna, but it takes living. place in 2086. And they're like, <laughs> in 2086, uh, people need more feet. And everyone just has like feet, like extra Too feet. Too many feet everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> And I also think that, like, don't take any fucking liberties. Sometimes I need more happens. feet. Yeah. Just make Sometimes this fucking, just make this over again with better graphics. Like they do yeah. with video games. Like they, when they remaster a video game, it's the same. Like a remaster of Resident Evil. Resident just Evil 4. That. Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 remakes. And, Resin, and Final Fantasy 7 remake. Actually, Final Fantasy 7 is a bad example because it's a remake in that it's a different thing. But the remakes of the Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4 are incredible at doing exactly what I'm talking about for this film. I don't think this will stand the test of time the way that Rocky Horror will. I think we'll be in the apocalypse by then anyway. Yeah, it will we'll just be, be our future. We'll be... We'll be we'll, I'll have organ failure and blood disease. The thing about Rocky Horror, though, is that there's boomers who will still dress up like fucking Dr. Frankenfurter. Dr. Frankenfurter. But one day I'm going to be old and you guarantee it. Like, you put Repo That's the true. Genetic Opera on and I'm 60 years old. You think I'm not going to be like, I am there. Yeah. Like, they don't have fucking Mario Kart 64 in the fucking old folks' home. I oh yeah riot. i'm gonna be quoting like old vines and be like they were roommates and <laughs> my were nurse roommates. is gonna be like they are you roommates. okay and i'll be like road they were roommates they had, I almost sure. listen i'll be right son. next to you going like i can't believe you've done this i can't <laughs> believe you've done this <laughs> kyle so good yeah give me the a hat back jordan richard give me a hat back jordan <laughs> Okay. Look at all those chickens. Look at all those chickens. I freaking love bats. <laughs> I put a whole bag of jelly beans Give up me my, my money, bitch. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> hey, hey. We're going to be crazy in the old folks. I smell like beef. It's going to be wild. I smell like beef. I smell like beef. I smell like beef. I smell like beef. <laughs> well, we I did smell it. like beef. We did it. Yeah, this has been another so amazing episode of. Hey, did you see yeah. this? One? I can't believe it. It's this is like a, it's like we were on X Games mode. We were on X Games mode. Yes. Um, uh... It's another three-hour episode. Cast, you're the king of the three-hour so episodes. Sorry, I just have lots of things to talk about. I know, I know but you <laughs> did last time too. You're very good at. Uh, fixating on the conversation and having so lots to say notes. we used to talk about how like oh with more people on the show that the show goes longer but i think it's just if we get passionate about what we're talking about it's gonna always elongate the uh you know it, it has to do with the the conversation it has nothing to do with the content or the yeah. amount of people i also Isn't will it? say i was talking to a friend of mine uh coming home from work today and I was like, wish me luck, because I could literally write a full essay about this, and I need to not speak for three hours this time. And then this I was is, like, ah, dang it. This is I think you could probably write a dissertation, yeah. like a doctorate yeah. style thing. I could do that song. about every Final Fantasy game, so I feel you. I get it. This uh, this is immortalized um, on Twitch and then YouTube, and also program note, uh, we're taking a break next week. I'm out of town. Uh, going forward, we are, of course, going to be doing 8 o'clock on Thursday nights. Um, Cass, I just, I can't overstate enough how enjoyable you are to, like, talk to. You're, like, you fit in for what we're trying to, like, create here so well, and I, like I keep saying, I'm You're one of us. I'm going to be... One of us. I'm going to be... One of us. You're going to be in our short list of, uh, constant guests. Sweet, let me know. I got ideas. Uh, 
Rose. I'll bring out my lists again. Bring your list. I feel like, Stephen, that's the next <laughs> soundbite you need to do. I've got my list. <laughs> yeah, Cass's list. I've got my list. <laughs> Very nerdy vibes. Yeah, it's just like an unrolling piece of paper <laughs> like for a giant too scroll. Long. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as always, for, for Stephen and for Cass, I'm Jason. For Jason and for Cass, I am Stephen. Oh, for Stephen and Jason, thank you again for having me. I'm Cass. And as we ask each and every week we have to ask a question and that is hey did you see this one we do enjoy you here Thank you think, for letting me just like be a little nerdling and hyper. I know, but I think that the last time you were on was one of the most enjoyable uh, episodes I've ever had because we just talked about like philosophy and shit. Philosophy I also made a horrible mistake stuff. last time. <gasps> what did you do? I, I quoted the wrong philosopher like a fucking idiot. You have Jujal. What do you mean? You, <laughs> it's right I there. No, I did it. I did it wrong job. <laughs>